should be no difference. He's looking at Eastern Washington. EWU, it's a Governor's Cup. They would like to come down here into the confines of the Kibbe Dome and take one away from the Vandals. It is Big Sky action. Yeah, that's right. The first time these two teams have ever met on the Big Sky football. Might be well advised in case you missed it over the weekend. Montana, uh, Montana fell to Weber State, so that means the Wildcats are surprising 4-0 in the sky. So if Idaho wants to remain still just a half game back, they'll have to shoot for a win here tonight. And that makes it extremely important for teams with two losses in the conference. Teams like Boise State, uh, Montana, Nevada, Reno, Northern Arizona, and Idaho State, all in desperate needs of wins. As you check the scores over the weekend. And the Vandals will give the ball up first to Eastern and dropping back deep. It will be for Eastern. Uh, Dominic Core, the deepest of three receivers as the Vandals are scrimmaging right around the 25 right now are set to break that initial kickoff huddle. And Jeff, this is the Governor's Cup. You'll have to remember that. This is the first meeting between these two teams since Eastern has entered the Big Sky Conference. These guys have met several times before, but this is the first time since they've been in the Big Sky Conference, and it should be a good one. Eastern coming in, they've got a couple of wins in Big Sky play. The Idaho Vandals looking tough coming off that big, impressive win last week at homecoming. And Eastern, incidentally, lost their homecoming last week. Idaho won their homecoming against Nevada, Reno, and John Freeze really had himself a career day that last week. Spuds against the Apples. Winner take all. And uh, not a crowd as big as we expected here, but they continue to file in as Casicchio backed up about seven yards to get the football game underway. And he'll scuff this one on the ground. Uh, bounces off one of the up backs and then falling on it for Easter and covering the ball is Paul Farrell right around the 35. So third, first down and 10 Easter. Check me the 30. Well, the CQ trying a little squib kick, maybe to catch them off guards a little bit, and maybe a fumble or something didn't quite work, and Eastern will start out with pretty decent field position from their own 31. And the good news is that sophomore quarterback John Snyder is back in the lineup after missing about a game in three quarters the past two weeks. Two losses for Eastern in that situation. Double tied in on first down and 10. Vernon Williams also in the backfield. He returned last week, and he sweeps it near side, runs away from one tackler, and then struggles up near the 35 or 36. Pretty good run by Williams on his first carry. You know, Jeff, we're going to watch this again in this first carry. Right now, he picks up more yardage on the ground than they had in the whole game last week because they were held to minus 26 yards on the ground Eastern last week versus Northern Illinois. Williams, really one of the only guys in the uh, team not from the state of Washington. He hails from San Diego. Give him seven yards on that one. Second down and three. Off the near hash and twin outs to the left. One man wide out to the right. Snyder gives it to Williams again, who falls forward for near first down yardage. Looks pretty close. He had to cross the 40 to about the 41 yard line. He got to the 41, depending on where they put the spot of the ball. It looks like from here that it would be a first down. It is a first down for Eastern. First down at 10 Eagles at the 41. Offensive line of Jeff Mickles, Scott Knoyer, Tim Trout, Steve Hine, and Mike Norton across the front. 275, 258, 235, 252, and 269. First down and 10. The Eagles at the 41. Early going of the football game, no score. Snyder for his first pass. And he zings it all, and it's tipped and broken up by Peter Wilkins, who opens at the middle linebacker position, and he played the pass route well. We're going to watch this again. Wilkins, a couple of games ago, was moved from the left end. He was a defensive end to that middle linebacker spot. They want to get him into the action a little bit more. Does Keith Gilbertson, Jeff, you'll watch this. Snyder rolling out to his left. And big number 87 put up a paw. Look at the man was wide open. Good defensive effort by Pete Wilkins. For Eastern, Tim Floyd has joined Williams in the eye. The senior out of Othello. Twin receivers out to the left, tight end right on second down and 10 after the pass deflection. Vandals uh, sending Ernest Sanders on the blitz, and Williams hit on the backfield, able to keep his feet, though, and get back to about the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Williams, and we've seen this little back, Steve, with good balance in his first few carries. Well, he's been impressive so far. We'll watch this one again, too, Jeff, as you see number eight, Ernest Sanders, coming in on the blitz, trying to scare him up a little bit, maybe get him in the backfield, but no way. Breaks a tackle right there. Nice job running. Wide receivers, Jamie Bensley, Ferris High, split out to the left, and Greg Fleming comes to the near side right on third down and 11 for Eastern, short number 40. Snyder trying to look for a screen, and from behind, Cord 
Smith, who picks up from where he left off last week. And Corey Smith running out the field. He is a very pumped up Idaho Vandal. We'll watch this one again. Look at number nine. You see him up 99. You see him on your screen. Just a straight drop back. Cord Smith coming in from the right side. And there was absolutely nothing John Snyder could do. He just tried to run away from him, Jeff. No way. Cord Smith right there to make a big drop. Bring on Eric Stein, who only leads the nation in one double-A punting. 43-yard average and a fair catch signal for him by Lee Allen. And he gathers it in just over the 30. 43-yard kick. He hits his average with 13-12 to go. Opening quarter. With John Freeze in the backfield, and you see Bruce Harris in motion. Good to see Bruce back from the knee injury. Freeze cranks it up, throws. Oh, ball off the shoulder pad of John Jake and incomplete. Well, John Jake had it, and that right arm once again by John Freeze sets up and throws it over to the right side. Jake should have probably come down with that, but the tip of the football hit him right in the shoulder pads and had to bounce right off. The Ocean Morris in for John Jake. Morris in Eric Jorgensen. Craig Robinson leading the Vandals in receiving. Fourth in the conference, 36 receptions. Jorgensen has 34. Jake, 32. The Ocean, 21. So they got a gang of them. Second down and 10. Freeze again, dropping to throw. Swings it out to Hoynes. Hoynes, oh, good defensive play by Eastern to snuff it out. No screen pass over to Hoynes. Hoynes picks up a couple of yards, and that's about it. Jeff, last couple of weeks, John Freeze has definitely been on target. He is 59 out of 97 in the last two weeks. That's 61% for 772 yards and seven touchdowns. So Freeze, the sophomore from Court Lane, playing some good football as of late. Continues to lead the Big Sky in total offense and second in the nation. Third down and seven Vandals. Freeze. Again, stammering in the pocket, plenty of time, and he swings it out to Harris. And again, good defense by Eastern to shut him down. Quinton Blight, 5'9", 160, the sophomore out of Oak Harbor, number one, came up and cut down Harris. Well, they've got that great secondary, does the Eastern Eagles, Jeff. Look at the time that John Freeze has. He goes on a straight draw back, sets up, has all the time, looks over to his right, can't find anybody, looks over to his left, there's a safety valve, drops it off there, that's all they get. Eastern with a 10-man front as... Brian, uh, pardon me, John plays. What a it's punt. a nice lofty spiral. It's taken by Vernon Williams. Williams stutter steps his way to the 20, and a pretty good return by Williams, who was not the intended man to start the ball game. 53-yard boot by John plays with 11:48 to go in the first quarter. He's an Eastern takes over first down and 10 at the 23. New setback in there. That's Tony Johnson. Double tight ends again, double wide. Oh, maybe a broken play, and Snyder will just put slide in the backfield. He didn't even make any attempt, and of course, remember, Snyder has that bad shoulder, and he wasn't going to... That's exactly what it was, too, Jeff. He just didn't want to get injured again, and he saw that the whole left side of the offensive defensive line for the Idaho Vandals coming up to make the stop. Snyder did a smart thing of going to his knee on the broken play. Steve Shiroki out of West Valley High School has come in the backfield, and... Uh, He'll join Vernon Williams, who's back in there. Shiroki lines up in front of Williams. And it'll be the tail of a tandem. That's Vernon Williams again. This stop guard, no big play there. No big yards either. Idaho sniffing it out. Nice play. Well, you and I saw Shiroki play quite a few times in his career up in West Valley in Spokane. And he was a one-man wrecking crew up there. See how he does in the college drives. Jamie Bensley, the leading receiver for Eastern. He's wide out to the left. To the near side right, Fleming. And a wing, Floyd, sent off to the left on third down and 11 from the 22. Oh, and that's action up front. Looks like the tight end was the first one to cross the line for Eastern Washington. Brooke Aldrich. Randy Coring right there. They're... Uh, Trying to determine exactly who was the first man offside. Well, you know that Weber State win on Saturday really makes uh, the Idaho game important. Next week, the Vandals venture to Ogden. It should be a very exciting game. Weber State, a very tough football team. Procedure against the Eagles. So it'll make it third down and rather 16 to go for Eastern. Dead ball. Looking for six in the offense. 
Van Blame with it was the number 89 Brooks Holder. 6'5", 234 pound senior tight end. Crossed just a little bit too prematurely. Albrecht's the second leading receiver for Eastern. We were anxious on that one. Third and 16 now, Jeff. The Idaho defense has held uh, secondary wise the last couple of times. Also, the Eastern Eagles on their first uh, defensive possession, Jeff, they did a good job of stepping out the pass. And John Freeze had a lot of time, but their secondary is tough, and they didn't allow a pass. These two teams match up very well statistically. We'll talk more about that as the game unfolds. Third down and 16 for the Eagles. Jerry Medved uh, faking blitz, and he drops off. Long count by Snyder. He drops the throw. And flings it up the left side, and he's got Bunsley for a first down at the 435. Jimmy Bunsley, he was just all by himself, too. Jim. There wasn't anybody out there in a flash. He laid a nice pass and did John Snyder. First down, they needed 16 yards to go for the first down. He picked up 18 in the first. Watch it again. One man in mind as Snyder drops back about a three-step drop back. Goes over, where's the defense? Boom, first down Eastern. Bensley is looking to become the first receiver in Eastern history to average 23 yards per grab. He was five yards short of that one, but you picked up the first down with the 18-yard reception. So first down and 10 Eastern at the 35 as Snyder converts on third to 16. Tosses back to Williams. Uh-oh, Williams in the open field and runs it into Idaho territory. Boy, we've seen Vernon Williams do a number so far on the defensive side for the Idaho Vandals, Jeff. This time he goes around left side, picks up another first down for Eastern. We'll watch it again. Remember, this is a team that last week against Northern Illinois had minus 26 yards in the ground. Either Illinois, Northern Illinois has a great defense, or uh, I don't know what happened, because look at this guy. He's just uh, running rampant through the Idaho Vandal defense. Virgil Paulson ran him out of bounds. First down and 10, the Eagles at the Idaho 44. time maybe checking off. Off the play action. Oh well behind the intended receiver the tight end Aldrich. Good defense too. Uh, Aldrich had about man-to-man -man coverage. There was no chance he probably could have made the reception. The ball thrown a little bit behind him brings up second down and ten for Eastern. Now Steve you look how much uh, John Snyder means to this team before he went down a couple of games ago. Eastern was four and one. And uh, Two and one in the conference, and they were sitting right there in perfect shape, but the injury to Snyder, he looks healthy at all here so far tonight, and is facing second down and ten. William Gall, he got plugged by Jerry Medved, number 51, and maybe someone underneath there, too, getting a piece of it. Yet, Cord Smith, number 99, and also for the Vandals, Craig Dowdy, number 80, all in on the stop. Well, he's been electing to keep it on the ground. You see some of the cone heads here. A little uh, Halloween a week away. Maybe these guys are getting their costumes on early. Warming up a little bit. I, I hope that these are costumes anyway. <laughs> Third down and eight. Didn't play like this on Remulac, did they? <laughs> 9.15 to go first quarter. High formation backs for Snyder. Just a sophomore. Rolling pocket, firing near side, and a diving reception by Bensley once again for another Eastern first down. Oh, they're going to say it was incomplete, Jeff. No, they said it was complete, and you know who the man who, was, uh, who made this play possible was number 33, Vernon Williams, the guy who's done so well on the ground. He laid a block on somebody coming from the right side of the Vandal to enable Snyder to set up and complete that pass. A beautiful block by number 33, Vernon Williams, who's had himself a great first period. Snyder being able to buy some time and find his man. First and ten. Williams, the short side. Peter Wilkins isn't going to let him get away as he knocks him out of bounds around the 30. Wilkins, the first man to come up there to help out and uh, coming up with Roger Cecil to give him a little added effort. We'll watch it again. Vernon Williams, he's gotten the call many times so far early in this ball game. This time tries over right side. There's a middle linebacker coming up to make the stop. He holds him anyway for Cecil to knock him out of bounds. Consider Jamie Townsend, the, probably one of the better backs in the big sky, or hurt early in the year and was redshirted. In fact, they almost redshirted Townsend. Right now he's in there for the Eagles on second down and 12. On the 30. And goes Williams again. Medved and Williams clobber him after about a three-yard game. We're going to watch it again and uh, 
see about a three or four yard gain this time. So Williams going over just the left guard, picks up good yardage. Brought down on a nice hit by Medved. Good camera work too, he really got a good look at that one. Third down and nine at the 27. Eastern, here they are again in this third down situation. Bensley right, Fleming left. Crowd getting into it a little bit, sounds like the Metrodome. away from one tackler. He did a nice job to get rid of the football, trying to spot his tight end Aldrich well short, incomplete, fourth down, and bring on Eric Stein. Well, he had to get rid of that in a quick hurry or else eat the ball, too. As Kevin Johnson in on him and a couple of other Idaho Vandals coming in, there was nothing that Snyder could do. Had to just throw the ball or else it would have been a big, big loss. Now the field goal unit comes on for EWU. This one about a 43-yarder, and consider Stein has kicked him from 57, two times from 51, and from 34. He's 5 of 9 on the year. Product out of West Valley of Yakima. And this one well within his range. And out of the hold of our zero, he fades it right off to the right. No good. Hit it well, but hit it off to the right. And so the Vandals are able to... The Idaho Vandals, second possession of the football game with the 27. Freeze, pro set formation, and gives it to Bruce Harris, who follows Todd Hoynes up through the middle, and then veers off to the right and picks up about three. That checked me more like about eight. Yeah, Bruce Harris over right side, Jeff. He needs to get into the game and get some uh, good yardage established. Earlier this season, he was the biggest running back for the Vandals, only a freshman. This time gets the carry over right side. Good blocking right there. Was that Hoynes with a nice lead block, springing for a couple more, and Bruce Harris gets about three or four just on his own. They touched him down back at the 33, so a gain of six, second down and four. Good to get him back in the lineup for the Vandals. Got to get him healthy. Jorgensen left. Neosha Morris out to the right, and here's Hoynes who barrels for near first down yardage. Nothing fancy, just straight ahead running. Todd Hoyne, a second back through, number 20, got the call. Got almost to the well. Looks like they're going to spot it and give Idaho a decent spot. And it's going to be close enough to bring the chains out for measurement. Keith Gilbertson felt maybe Todd Hoyne's best game was last week against Reno. He did just about everything. Block, was used as well as a pass receiver, and ran very, very well, averaging over five yards per crack. Looks like it is a uh, Vandal first down. Yes, it is. That's a football length, and so Idaho picks it up. No score in the game, 7.06 to go, first period. From the Kibbe Dome, and you get a look at some of the Kibbe Dome crowd here, and I would guess right around maybe uh, 8,000. Jeff, looking at the crowd, you know who the Coneheads are? They look like they're Virgil Paulson's folks. They've got Virgil Paulson's number and jerseys on. <laughs> first down and 10 at the 37. Breeze looking left, now he wants to throw and dumps it off, and it's incomplete. Maybe Rush apply from the right side this time, and Freeze only about a two-step drop back. Looked like it was just going to be a quick slant pattern, but they uh, didn't have time to even get the ball out. And good defense by the Eastern Eagles. There's the Eastern Rooting section. They brought a few folks. And Keith Gilbertson. Knowing he needs a win here tonight, it's an important game. It's not only a battle for the Governor's Cup, it's the first time that Eastern and Idaho have clashed at the Big Sky level. John Jake getting out of the field a little bit late and finally gets set to the near side. Harris in motion, so no setbacks. Four men, five men out in the pattern. And Freeze whips it up the far sideline through the hands of Harris incomplete. Well, he had him there too, Jeff. It just would have been just a little bit softer. Harris would have had it coming out of the backfield, but his pass was just overthrown him just by a second. Hey, they just got this off with one second to spare, too, as the clock is running down just one second. You'll see Freeze on a straight drop back. has such a beautiful touch. Oh, just barely missed it. On the coverage, the middle linebacker, Alan Gilmore. 6-2-225 from Richland on that play. Harris had him beat, too. He had him beat by a good step, step and a half. Third down and 10, the Mandels on the 37. Freeze from the pocket. Look at the time. Oh, watch out, though. The ball knocked loose and able to jump on it for Idaho. One of the interior linemen and Freeze really got cut from behind. Definitely, we're going to watch this again. He, he didn't know he was there. I don't know if it was an interior lineman or if it was Craig Robinson back blocking. Yeah, I think it was Robinson. Robinson over there, number 85, trying to keep that guy off him and freeze. Look at the time. Had no idea that there was somebody behind him. And, oh, the lick right there. Robinson did a good heads-up play by just jumping on the ball. And Mike Kruzich, 6'4", 235, junior out of Seaholm High in Bellingham. 
Got the sack there. Here's Williams. Oh, boy. Ooh. Oh, he gets creamed at the 40. That is a major league in <laughs> Roger Cecil, number 43. My goodness. He gets up and just springs right back up to his feet. Vernon Williams, a tough customer. Watch this. Put Watch your, this hit. Put your mouthpiece in on this one because Cecil's going to tee off. Now, this is a big cement structure here, but the whole place rattled on this hit. Boom. Yeah, but Ernest Sanders uh, had a little piece in that one, too. 37-yard punt, 10-yard return. Eastern, first down and 10, just over the 40. And that's Williams, who somehow wriggles out of there for about uh, four yards. Vernon Williams is only 5'6", 171 pounds, though. He's only a sophomore, and he is showing some excellent quickness, exploding through the hole, and does a good job of spinning off a couple of tackles. Picked up four yards, Jeff, when he should have been stopped at the line. Sean Moore comes in the Eastern lineup in place of Todd Johnson. And Moore in front of Vernon Williams in the backfield, out of the eye. Double wides, Fleming and Bunchley up to the left. Second down and six, Williams again submarines his way for a couple, three more. Got about three, and they're trying to get the left side again. Corn Smith right there, Pete Wilkins also in number 87, coming up to make the stick. Looks like they're going to be short a couple. Trying to blow some holes open on the left side, and he was trying to go off guard, but didn't see a hole opening up, so he tried to take it off tackle himself, did Vernon Williams, and look, Jeff, coming off the field, he's hurt. That is a tough break for Vernon Williams, and he's just got to be frustrated with the injury as he comes off, and just getting healthy last week. So in the backfield, replacing him comes Tony Johnson, along with Tim Floyd from the eye. Third and three from the 47 of Eastern. Johnson, who was able to power his way with the extra effort for the first down. Lost his helmet on that play, but got the first down. That's what matters, and Johnson just a good heads-up runner. Once again, Jeffy was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but managed to pick up three yards on just sheer force, keep those legs a pumping, and he got the first. We'll watch it again. Watch him. He gets stuck right here at the front of the line. Boom, should have been dropped. Keeps the legs pumping, picked up another couple, three yards for the first. First down and 10 Eastern. They moved it down to the into the field, and then Eric Stein missed a 44-yard field goal. The Eagles on the move from the split-back alignment this time. Moore and Williams. Snyder off the play action. Well, they're going to say no, incomplete. Had him for a minute. Nice pass that time by Snyder, but uh, good defense by the Vandals, and the pass was dropped. Ernest Sanders on the coverage, and Aldrich the tight end. Primary receiver on this play, Steve. Well, he had it, too, right in his fingertips, but then the hit right there, and there was no way he could hold on to it coming down. You know, it's interesting because a lot of these kids are from the coast on both sides and had a chance to play each other or with each other in some cases on the prep scene. So they know each other very, very well, and there's a lot on the line just besides the fact this is a big, big Sky Conference game. Second down and 10 from the 48. Williams in trouble, and we got a loose football. And on the play, the Vandals come up, and boy, I don't know who made the initial hit, but whoever it was has to get the credit for this, Jeff, because that hit was applied hard. I think it's Sean Moore, the fullback, had the ball, and over the right side, I didn't see who it was. Did you see who it was? No. Came up and made the stick, but boy, that was once again a major league hit. Cause a fumble, the Vandals get it. Ernest Sanders jumps on it for the Vandals, and it's first down and 10. I don't know with its first break of the ball game at the 43 of the Eagles. Did you see that little thing right there, too, that John Priest said, okay, guys, we got it. Now settle down a little bit. Don't get too excited. Vandals with four men out in the pattern. Freeze over the middle. Diving reception by Jorgie near a first down. Well, Eric Jorgensen, he's just been all world for the Idaho Vandals this season. Look, look at him, just a skinny little guy, but he does so much. He's got the quickness and everything. This is just a pass that they run a thousand times a week. This time, Freeze goes back and slant pattern. Jorgensen right there. Second down and about a half a yard to go. 35th reception on the year for Eric Jorgensen. He has four touchdowns to show for, show for it. And they are not short touchdowns either. We'll get into those a little bit later. He's had some long touchdown passes. Vandals with David Jackson, Neosha Morris, John Jake out to the right, and point is in motion. Freeze. Oh, what a throw, Neosha. Oh. So 
double co all triple coverage almost. And Freeze, hey, but once again, we've talked about this all season long. Credit the offensive line of the Idaho Vandals. They are giving Freeze all the time, and he's such a good, strong quarterback. Watch this. Three step drop back. Boom. Right there. Has to go over the defender. Oh, man. And John Freeze on target. Great catch by Morris, too, in the crowd. He knew he was going to get popped, but hung on. First down for Idaho at the 10. 3.30 to go. Still no score in the football game. The Vandals trying to dash in on the opportunity. Eastern fumbling near midfield. Big fumble you know, against an opportunistic football team like the Idaho Vandals. It's costly to make those mistakes, especially when you're in your own territory, coughing up when you're on your own side. Harris in the backfield. He's wanting to throw again. Looking, looking, looking. Swing to Dr. Robinson. Robinson at the five with a penalty flag down away from the action on the opposite side of the field. Penalty flag thrown. That might be defensive holding or something in the end zone. I don't know. As you see Craig Robinson get up. Boy, that's a blow. Hmm. A little shaky. He might come out for a series or so or a down or so, but Craig Robinson, you can bet your bottom dollar will be back. Got the worthy backup in Chris Slater, but let's see what happens on this play to Robinson. Maybe some defensive holding. You can't see it. It's at the top of the screen where the flag was thrown as they dump it off to number 85, Craig Robinson. Boy, he got hit right in the knee. That had to smart a little bit. The guy on the bottom, too, kind of gave an extra little twist on that play at the bottom of the stack. Going to be against Eastern. It had to have been like a, a hold or something. Defensive holding before the pass. First down. You know, and that is a shame for Eastern, Jeff, because the, where the flag was thrown, it was away from the play. They weren't going to that side. It was on the right side that the flag was thrown. The play was developing over to the left side. It went over to Robinson on the left side, and that is a shame for Eastern. So instead of second down and goal at the five, it's first down and goal at the five. So on that play, you just give Idaho another down in four down territory. First and goal of Andals. Slater in for, well, actually, no tight ends now, I don't believe. Yes, Slater is two in there. And there's Todd Hoynes, who gets in for the score. Hoynes hit it about the one-yard line, but he had Mr. Momentum behind him, and he just squirted right over there for the first score of the ball game. So the Vandals on the board first, 2.46 to go, first quarter. We'll watch it again. Now, this is the intended receiver, too, on this play. As he comes out of the backfield, nobody picks him up right there. Where's the backers? Nobody was there. Point is just going inside scores. Watch from a different angle. Bet they score again. There's a great angle right there. Point is just lurches his body over that goal line. The CQ off the high snap, and he's able to get it through there. Give Jorgen some credit to uh, Getting it down, so we'll break away. But pardon me, we'll stay here, I guess, with 2.46 to go in the first quarter. 7 0. The Vandals up front, Steve, first. Well, now, see, coming into the ball game uh, tonight, in the last two ball games, Freeze had seven touchdowns, so give him another one. He has eight in the last three games. He's building up more yardage. He's going to have 1,000 uh, yards in these last three games. John Freeze uh, doing such a good job. But I'll tell you what, you know what makes John Freeze? He is a good quarterback, only a sophomore, but the, as good a quarterback as he is, it's because of his offensive line and the capabilities of his receivers that make him that good. I mean, his receivers, we saw some great catches there. Neosha Morris, uh, Todd Wynn is coming out of the backfield, Eric Jorgensen, Craig Robinson, they just that core of receivers, Lee Allen, they all do such a good job, but the only way that he gets the time to do that is because of his offensive line. Like we've mentioned before, John would be the first guy to tell you that, too. 2.46 to go. It's a 7-0 ball game. The Vandals... Taking advantage of a miscue by Eastern, a fumble out the 45 by Sean Moore, the fullback, and then Randall's working down for the score. Yeah, we didn't get the guy who came up and hit Sean Moore to cause that fumble like you talked about, but uh, you got to give him half of that touchdown because he's the guy who sprang it. That was just a great hit, caused Moore to fumble. Ezekiel, and he's been uh, making a habit of stripping the ball on the ground as a play. He'll kick it deep, however. And dropping back near the goal line for Easton. And returning, that's Dominic Kaur. Kaur, not near the 20 before he's run out of bounds. That's all. 
Kendrick Jackson downfield making the stop for the Vandals, and it's first down and 10 Eastern from the 21. Easterns have put up some pretty good yards, but nothing to show for it yet. This is a scoring play. It only took three plays, 44 yards, and just a little over a minute, almost a minute and a half. Touchdown pass to Whitey. First and 10. Now we don't see Vernon Williams back in there, so apparently the injury is serious enough for him not to continue. Toss back to Tony Johnson, who runs the short side and gets two, maybe three. We'll watch it again. Tony Johnson, just a freshman, 5'9", 193 pounds, pretty good size. Tries the right side, gets a couple before he's dropped. You know, Jeff, Eastern's got to be pretty happy, though, in this first quarter with the little bit of the running game that they've established because we keep harping on it a little bit. But last week against Northern Illinois, they were held to minus 26 yards on the ground. So far against the Vandals, and the Vandals' defense isn't that bad. They're uh, establishing some sort of a running game. Second down and seven. One of the up-backs, cheering for Eastern, that's Steve Shiroki. Local product, Spokane's West Valley, just a freshman. 214 pound freshman at 5'11. He is a workhorse, big strong kid. This time he gets a call over left side, picks up a couple. Third down now and about uh, two or three to go. Good news for Eastern, they've got Vernon Williams taped up and he's back in the ball game. Brunsley left, Fleming right, tight end Aldrich right. Got two tight ends on this third down and two from the 29. Williams, the first down and more out of the 35. Doesn't look like he's too shaken up. This time, gets over left side, and uh, first time since he got popped, takes it over. He needed a couple yards, picked up about seven or eight yards. Gets up a little slow again, though. He's not 100% definitely. You see number 51, Jerry Medved, linebacker, make the stop. Boy, he hit that outside corner fast, doesn't he? Just blazes right by a guy, and he's through for the opening. Picks up seven yards on the first down. Eastern doing a good job on the ground. 37-yard line. First and 10. Left hash. Snyder on the play fake. Near side. Benzley, great catch. Got hit by Richard Carey, but not before he got the first down. That was concentration. He knew that the guy was behind him, and Bunsley does such a good job. We'll watch it again. That ball was a nicely thrown ball by John Snyder, but he laid it up there maybe just a little bit too much, had a little bit too much loft on it, and he knew he was going to get hit. Did a good job of turning around, faced his defender, didn't take it in the back, took it up the chest high, got driven out of bounds, driven out of bounds, but not before he made the first. First down and 10 at the 48. Eastern moving once again. Robert Jefferson, and now at a wide receiver. On this first down play, and Shiroki for short yards. Steve Shiroki, 214 pounds. They use him for short yardage situations. This time, of course, it was a first and 10, but it looked like short yardage. He takes it over the right side, picked up about a yard. You know, you got to admire a team like Eastern Washington that does recruit almost exclusively inside the state of Washington and uh, funding the major reason why. I just wish that uh, they could get some bigger crowds up in Spokane when they play in Albion. It's just a shame that they don't draw more. Good football team. Best game in town. You gotta wonder about it. Second down and nine. And Snyder will hand it back to Warren Williams who jukes for a couple three yards. Warren Williams will watch him again. Now, boy, watch when he comes up. He comes up so slow. He's just pretty gimpy out there. Number 33 having a pretty good first quarter as it draws to the end. Goes down. Pretty good ball game so far. The Vandals with the early lead, but Eastern beginning to mount a drive. Work the opposite way. Motion, that's Fleming through the formation. Wing Floyd set off to the left. Williams out of the backfield, scurries for the first down, and boy, with a quick feet, gets it to the 45. Boy, he really got driven back after he got to the 45. Roger sees a lot of head hunting tonight. That was a great, great tackle right there, and uh, I think it was John Place who was there. I think it was number 18 who was there, Jeff. We'll watch it again. I think it was Place who came up and made the stick. Just a little screen right here, get him out of the backfield. Pretty good opening right there, too. The watch up there. That was, right. that was John Place coming up right. to make a nice tattoo. And here's Williams, a little gimpy coming off. 
But first down and 10, Williams able to get the necessary yards, and Eastern continuing to move from the Idaho 34. That's Tony Williams bellying his way for about five. For Tony Johnson, pardon me. He's at uh, 193 pounds freshman. Does a good job over the right side, picks up about five yards. On the ground, he has three touchdowns, and that leads all the running back core out of Pasco High School. Pretty decent looking drive mounted right now by the Eastern Washington Eagles. 42, Tim Floyd comes in. Robert Jefferson checks out. Second down and five after the five yard carry by Johnson. Single setback. And John Snyder will give it to him. Now, left tackle, and he scrambles for about three. And the Eagles content to keep it on the ground. They've been uh, playing the majority of their offensive plays have been on the ground. This time over the left side. A gain of about three yards, about a yard to go for the first. We made mention of the fact that these two teams match up well. Idaho in the conference is seventh against the rush. Eastern, on the other hand, uh, they are ninth in the conference running the ball. So the lower end of the statistics, but Eastern moving the ball, and Lloyd Johnson powering for the first. Well, Johnson could smell where the first down line was, Jeff. He just took it over, got popped right at the line of scrimmage, and once again, they are some pretty heavy-duty running backs for the Eastern Eagles. Watch it, he gets hit right at the line of scrimmage right there. Manages to keep his feet and keep going a couple more yards for the first down. Good heads up running. The big number 77, Jeff Mickle at 275, the junior who was helping push Johnson a little bit forward. But he also got a nice block that opened the hole for him as well. First down and 10 Eastern. Here they are at the Idaho 22. Trying to get even in this ball game. 7 0 to score the Vandals lead it. And Snyder to throw. The tight end Aldrich inside the five. Nice grab by Aldrich. He almost missed that one, almost mishandled it, but brings it down, cradles it in there, picks up another first down inside the five-yard line to about the three. Or they're going to mark it on about the two-yard line. You see Brooke Aldrich, 6'5", 234 pounds, a big target. Snyder does a good job of hitting him, too, Jeff. Aldrich lined up on the right side. He's right in the middle of the pocket. Boom. Almost dropped it, brings it down, and just about gets in the end zone. Boy, that looks awful a lot like the crossing pattern that Idaho runs with. Very much so. Craig Robinson, first down and goal, Eastern at the two. Johnson scores. Tony Johnson, they keep it on the ground once more. Why not? First and goal from the two-yard line. Give it to the guy who got you there. That was Tony Johnson having a good series this time. Just a freshman. He had three touchdowns, I think you were saying, a minute ago. Now give him four. Boom. Good, good runner. These runners are strong runners. Nice hole open up on the left side, off the offensive side, too. And after the Vandals face two of the better backs in the conference last week, and Folger and Floyd, they're really taking on some little-known backs, and these guys are doing a better job. PAT added by Eric Stein, and with 12.32 to go on the first half, we're even. 12.32 to go, first half, and Eric Stein, fine place kicker from Yakima, kicks it off, and John Jake will circle underneath this one at the five. 20, 45, and some more. Oh, we got a little something breaking out uh, on the sidelines there behind the Vandal van bench after the return. These two teams really don't care a whole lot for each other. No, especially, you know, like you talked about earlier, where a lot of them know they've played each other in the prep days in the Seattle area. You just watch, look at the last Eagle scoring drive. But a lot of times there's animosity there because they know about each other. They know that they were probably, a lot of them were legends back then in the school days. And they probably hated each other when they were arch rivals then. And now they're coming back, they're in the college ranks. It's the same thing over again. I imagine that will be the last time we see some heated debate. We have personal fouls both ways on that one too. So the offsetting penalties give Idaho a first down at the 26 yard line. Pretty good looking scoring drive, that last drive by the Eastern Eagles. They mixed up their plays quite a, quite a bit, almost made a touchdown by the pass, kept it on the ground for the touchdown, and looked pretty decent. 12.27 to go, first quarter, Idaho sets to go to work. Miyoshi Moore is the motion man. And John Freeze with all kinds of time. Up the near side, and it's Johnny Jake for first in the 42 of Eastern. Was Johnny Jake, and he was a man to man with Quentin Blythe, and he just had Blythe and beat by about a step, and uh, that's all it took. Freeze could see that he had him beat, laid it in, another nice pass, and 
the Vandals pick up big yardage. Boom, right there. Good enough for a first. Not bad coverage by Blythe, really. Good position by Jake. Perfectly thrown ball by Freeze. First and ten, the Vandals just inside the Eastern 43. Todd Hoynes looking like last week and runs for about seven. They have to get good efforts out of Todd Hoynes. He has not disappointed the Idaho Vandals and head coach Keith Gilbertson yet. This time it takes a handoff from Freeze. Goes over right side. Some pretty good blocks right there. Finds the hole, picks up six yards. Had Eric Jorgensen and Neosha Morris throwing some blocks on that play. So these guys aren't just a speed bird, because they're not guys that just go out on a pass play. They can block, too. Second down and a long three to go for Idaho. A timing pattern to Neosha for the first down inside the 30. <laughs> Great play. Just a little quick hitter right there to Neosha Morris, who's about to step off the line of scrimmage. And just quick hit. Get it out and go. They needed about three yards to go for the first down. Yosha picks up five in the Idaho court. The battle's not wasting too much time on this drive, Jeff. 11.29 to go. Eastern a short time to go. Tony Johnson carried it in. And that uh, evened our score. Officials are saying something. I don't know what exactly they could be talking about in the huddle. I wonder if maybe down in the trenches there's a little extracurriculars going on, maybe saying both teams, hey, let's just settle down a little bit and play some football. I don't know if that's the case, but we saw a little uh, heat a while ago. That might have been something to do with it. First down and 10 at the 30. Point is off tackle, cuts it upfield. Is another nice run. About seven more on that one. And a beautiful block applied by number six, Eric Jorgensen, on this one. We'll watch it again. Jorgensen at the top of your screen goes out right there, makes a nice block, plays off him a little bit. And Hoynes gets a good yard. Get a chance, Steve, next time. Take a look when Freeze comes up to the line. He'll stop for just an instant and check out the defense. What you call reading what's going on out there. And, of course, John has the opportunity to change the play if he wishes. There he goes right now, taking a look at what's happening in the secondary. One of the hardest things for a quarterback to do coming out of high school into college is finally figure out the read. Second down and two. was on the defense, but Blythe didn't know that the pass was coming there. He could look into the eyes and see that it was coming, but that was the only way. He had his back turned, didn't know when to put up his arms, and a beautiful pass once again. Blythe makes the tackle coming down, but uh, he was turned around. He didn't know where the pass was. That's when a receiver and a quarterback know more than anyone else knows. Jorgensen, he had such good hands and good concentration, followed it. He knew that his man didn't know where the ball was, and Jorgensen just grabbed it, came down. Idaho looks like they could score again. First down and goal at the three. Robinson again, not in there yet. Bruce Harris finds the end zone. Touchdown, Idaho. Over the left side. Beautiful holes open up again. Bruce Harris, he needed that one. Get a little self-esteem going again. He's been injured for the last few weeks. Got it over the left side. The touchdown. Randall's like to go to that two tight end offense, and on this occasion, Jason Pulliam was in there, lined up on the near side, but Chris Slater, number 94, the top of your screen, cutting inside a block right there, Harris, because of Slater, kicking out. Harris has got to go back to the huddle and say, hey, thank you, everybody, for those blocks. And Dick Zorin's having a word with the official. Zorin's in search of his 60th win. Nine years for the Eastern program, winning percentage of 66%. Not bad. When he took over, Eastern just an NAIA school, but has since jumped up to the Division I AA and now a Big Sky member. And once again, we see the referee conferring. I uh, just talked to Dick Zorns. Now he's going over to talk to Keith Gilbertson. Don't quite know what this is all about. You might have had a point alluding to the fact that there could be a little something extra after the play or something being said. We don't know. We will have to watch a little bit, watch in the trenches to see if there's anything that we can see. That might not be it at all, but we don't know. Desicchio trying to make it 14 to 7, and he pops her through. So 10.20 to go, first half, and the Vandals back in front. Steve Michael bust in with 10.20 to go in the first half, 14 to 7. The Vandals, a nice looking drive, respond to that Eastern touchdown and are back in front. Well, we kind of thought maybe coming into this ballgame we could see some high explosive offense. And it started out a little bit slow as both teams kind of feeling each other out early in that first quarter, but uh, the last couple times everybody's touched the ball, we've seen points produced on the scoreboard, so we could be in for a big scoring night. 
Smith gets it on the ground, takes a hop into the hands of Tim Floyd. Floyd over the 35 and Eastern with decent field position to start at the 38. Tim Floyd, kind of a familiar name. No, this is not the Idaho Vandal basketball coach. Right. You see that last scoring drive, only two minutes, a little over two minutes, 74 yards, six plays, that two-yard run by Bruce Harris over the left side. First down and 10, Eastern, as he's offensive, starting to get a little bit tuned. Now, 10-17 to go, and John Snyder. The sophomore, set to go to work from the 38. Single setback, that's Johnson. Johnson gets away from Roger Cecil and over the 40 for some extra yards. Cecil has played a good ball game defensively for the Vandals, Jeff. He's going to be number 43 coming up from the screen in your screen, making the initial stop to slow down the runner. That Cecil right there slows him down a little bit. Almost gets him, but everybody else converges. Nice job by Raj. And Jerry Medved helping out, 51. One of the stoppers there to polish him off. Four-yard gain, second and six. Fleming left, Bunsley and Jefferson out to the right. Single setback, Johnson. And Johnson, and Cecil and making Cecil up again. Shirt tackle he missed last time. Roger Cecil and uh, Ernest Sanders coming up to give him a little help, and Ernest Sanders gives him a shove, too, when he comes off of it. We'll watch it again, number 43, just playing an excellent ball game. Some good blocks up there, but 43 following the play, plays off a block, gets him Ernest Sanders right there. Didn't like the extra hit he achieved. You didn't see it in your screen, but coming back up after that play, uh, Sanders had a couple of words. I know four to go for uh, second quarter. Washington High School in Kirkland gives the ball to Johnson and Johnson tripped up underneath Cord Smith the first man to get a hand on him kind of a delayed draw this time but Cord Smith saw it coming he plugged the hole and grabbed him down got back to the line of scrimmage but that's about all we'll watch it again watch number 99 goes back just in a pass gives it to him on the draw Smith plugs the whole place off his block just exactly like you're supposed to stops him Kevin Johnson also helping out on the stop Eric Stein for his second punt of the game And he hits another beauty. Can you understand why he's first in the nation? Lee Allen uh, faking like he was going to make the catch without a signal and lets it go into the end zone. So with 8.18 to go here in the fair staff, you see the score. He to throw, swings it out. That's Neosha Morris. Oh, a nice move by Neosha. They knocked down around the 25. I give credit to Eastern for hanging in there on that play and finally tripping him up. That's tough to, tough to do when you're going that far or that that fast laterally to stop and then try to cut back against the grain is tough to do. Watch again, freeze rolling out. Neosha right there. Stops and cuts back right there. Almost sprung. It did spring it for a couple more, but almost sprung it for big yardage. Jason Elliott, the free safety out of Kashmir on the play, but Neosha able to fake him first. Bruce Harris sweeping far side. And Harris uh, with the final white jerseys on top tries to Lurch is way near the first down marker. It comes up a little bit short. Well, the Eagles defense that time led by middle linebacker Al Alan uh, Gilmore. Number 58 following the play did a good job of getting the ocean. But the ocean still had some yardage. It's third and about one to go for the Vandals. 7-16 to go. An entertaining first half it has been. And the Idaho's, lo Idaho's looking at third and a yard. Set near side, but check out Todd Hoynes. He'll get the football and also get hit in the backfield. Oh, he was going nowhere. And the first guy there for the Eagles, right tackle, Jim Furster, 6'5, 238, the senior out of Rogers High in Spokane. Watch it, watch number 71. Saw a play coming up, got rid of his man, just shook him off, and Hoynes absolutely nowhere to go. Nice defense. Excellent defense. And a new punt return man back there for Eastern, and that is Kevin O'Connor. In place, wobbly spiral taken by O'Connor at the 35. Near side, oh, he's able to get away and then stumbles inside Idaho territory. 35-yard punt on that one by plays. Jim Medved was the man coming up to make the tackle for the Idaho Vandals as the Vandal defense comes back out. Eastern looked pretty good last time. As you see the Big Sky standings, Weber State, look at that. 6-1 overall, 4-0 in the Big Sky. The Vandals in second place, 3-1. A couple of
Pimo, Boise State, Eastern at 2-2. Two and two. Montana, 2-3. Two and Nevada, Reno, 2-2. Two and 4-3 two. and three overall. Nevada, Reno was beaten this weekend by Stephen F. Austin, 9-7. Non-conference game, of course. First down and 10 Eastern from the Vandal 49. Snyder with no fake to throw. Down the middle. And he's got his man. First down. Todd Johnson. The senior out of Hope, Idaho at 6'1 and 214. Able to get free. Snyder with a nice pass too, Jeff. Had some good protection. Five-step drop back. Hooked over to his left. Got some good zing on the ball to get it over the linebackers. And coming down with the catch was the Eastern Eagles. They have first down inside the 25-yard line, about the 24. So here's a good look at the Hope product. Wasn't expecting to see a whole lot of action, but he's in there right now. First down and 10 at the 24 of Eastern, uh, of Idaho. Johnson. This is Tony Johnson, who cuts it up the hash mark and runs it out for about seven yards. Tony Johnson does the same play that he scored the touchdown on over left side. This time again gets it. He's a big heads-up runner. Only a freshman, but weighs close to 200 pounds. Gets that uh, good speed going, too, Jeff, and he's a tough target to bring down. 5.38 to go, first half. 14-7 the Vandals, but Eastern moving. Second down and four. Quick out, Snyder throws quickly, incomplete. Tended for Bunsley. Once again, one of those quick slant patterns. Looks like one of the playbooks of the Idaho Vandals. This time thrown behind him, there was no chance for it. Brings up a third down now and about four to go for Eastern. A lot of talented receivers in the big sky, Bunsley being one of them. Well, I think as far as you know, fans' appreciation and the fun, the Big Sky Conference is great. When I mean, they put the ball in the air, you see a lot of good offense. It's fun to watch. Third down and four. Another big down for the Eagles from the Vandal 24. Snyder crosses it back to Johnson. Johnson heavy traffic, and he's nailed by Jerry Medved. Well, short of a first down, number 51. Eating nails down there and making the play. Watch the man who makes this play happen defensively for the Idaho Vandals, number eight, Ernest Sanders. Watch right there. Turns it inside. He wanted to go outside. Ernest Sanders right there to turn the play inside. Everybody else there to make the play for the Vandals defensively. Ernest Sanders is, is uh, as, at the strong safety, plays great for the Vandals. So here's Stein on for a 37-yard field goal. He missed from 44 the first time. Hooked his last one to the right. This time it's set up over on the left hash. Stein finds his 10 on the year. And it's a fake. Or is it a fake? I don't know. I don't know either. That was, a, that was really a peculiar play. I don't know if it was that or Pete. I, I, I don't know. Hopefully it, we'll have this again. It's Todd Johnson, but not fooling Idaho. Boy, this is something I have never seen before. <laughs> I don't know how that would have worked. Did he kick the ball, Steve? I don't know. I, I think that. he kicked it. I don't know. <laughs> it was either like he kicked he it or they gave it to him. We'll watch it again. I don't know what happened. Keep in mind the uh, short... Go... No, no, it was a play. Drew Azur is the holder there, and he just kind of flipped it out on the shovel pass yeah. to Todd Johnson. Exactly what it was. A little shovel pass over to him. They tried to surprise the Vandals, but... Uh-uh. Boy, good defense on that fourth down fake. First I like that. Ten. Good gutsy call. Didn't fool the Vandals. Neosha Morris puts the defense for about eight. There's that quick hitter again. The Vandals got, got a uh, first down earlier with that play. This time over on the left side in the Ocean Morris. He picks up about eight yards. We'll watch it again. Just boom. Look at Freeze almost throws it like a shot put right put. there. That's a shot put play. <laughs> I like that good play going back, though, to the fake field goal. That was kind of a neat play. Almost worked, too, for Eastern. Good defense, heads-up defense by the Vandals, though. Second down and about a yard and a half. Another timing pattern to Johnny Jake, who makes a reception and circles back to the <laughs> inside. <laughs> and like a pinball, continues up to the 32-yard uh, line. Well, Jake uh, knows he's supposed to turn his clock back tonight, but he almost got <laughs> turned back tonight. Boy, now watch this. <laughs> he's going forward, and all of a sudden he's backwards. He does a great job. Spin move, nice perk and jerk move right there. Gets hit right there, gets knocked into tomorrow. And that's all he's going to get. First down, though, for the Vandals. 428 to go. Big play in this last drive for Eastern. Idaho held on the fake field goal. First down and 10 from the 33. Bruce Harris. Oh, here comes the linebacker to drag Martin, it down. Matt, no. And 
Anthony Witten, yeah, Anthony 27 Witten. sophomore out of Seattle. Was not to be denied. Nobody came up there and he just uh, did it all. Look at him too. He's a little pumped up now defensively for Eastern. Second 14, a four-yard four drop on the play. Are we going to get a chance to see John Grace throw the ball here? <laughs> Second and 14. No. <laughs> Lee Allen wide out to the left. Eric Jorgensen wide split to the right, and the Ocean Morris in the slot. Breeze over the middle. Chris Slater inside the 15. Well, when you don't have Craig Robinson in the lineup, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your next guy, Chris Slater, number 94, coming from the right side. A wide open down the middle. Picks up about 20 yards in an Idaho Vandal first down. We'll watch it again from ground level. Freeze once again, protection plus. It's over the right side, number 94. Gets the catch. Got, took a pretty good hit right there, too. Goes down, Idaho Vandal first down. 3.23 to go first half. Boy, that was a nice conversion there. Don't know the extent of the injury to Greg Robinson. But Slater really picked up the slack on that one. First down play from the 48. Freeze setting up the screen. Swings it out to Harris. And Harris uh, got knocked down after a nice defensive play. I'm trying to see. I think that is uh, I think it's Andre Kaur. Andre Kaur wasn't expecting to see any action tonight. Dominic, his brother, was replacing him. But Andre in there. Set it up. Screen the whole way. Get it off over on the left side to Bruce Harris. Harris tried to get it around there, but uh, Carr was right there to drop him after only a two-yard pickup. Clock continued to run, Jeff. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. The Vandals look like just a slim 14-7 lead. And facing second down and eight. Trip set to the near side. One after the last freeze and trouble. Lewis football. And oh, there is Witten on it for Eastern. And we got some flags after the play. Something breaking out. Well, a big turnover in this game. And John Freeze, I was watching him and he got up, he got up, and he's walking off the field under his own power and everything. It doesn't look like he's shook it up, but he really took a bad hit right there. That's got to hurt a little bit. Good defense, though. And Witten, who just made a nice play defensively not long ago, able to jump on it. See if these flags are going to go against uh, let's find out. Oh, that's going to be tacked on after the play on the Vandals. Well, this place is not filled to capacity, but boy, it sounds like it on that because uh, everybody does not like the call. The officials trying to keep order in this ball game early, and look, all of a sudden, with two minutes and 23 seconds to go, Jeff, they're knocking on the door at the Vandal 22. Closing moments of the first half. Idaho was able to take an opportunity uh, on a fumble and score. See if Eastern can do the same. Brown's still a little bit uneasy over that last one. First down at the 22. Snyder for the end zone. Bunsley, touchdown. Beautiful pass. Excellent pass was there. The Vandals played it just about as well as you can, but just a beautiful pass. Got to give all the credit in the world to John Snyder. And Bunsley, not a bad catch either in a crowd. That was a beautiful catch too, but this pass was right on the money. Bunsley goes up, gets it, gets hit, but not after he crossed the, the end zone line. Another touchdown. We've got ourselves almost a tie ball game. It's 14-13. Take a look at it for a third time. You're right, Steve. Perfect throw. It was. Had to thread the needle. Stein makes it a tie ball game with 2.17 to go in the first half. So both these teams, after a fumble, take it in and score. That's exactly right. You give them the advantage of any kind, and both these teams have that good foot in offense, and they can do it. I'm very impressed with the Eastern Eagles coming off that disappointing home homecoming last week lost to Northern Illinois. They're coming down to the confines of the Kibbe Dome, and they're making a very good ball game out of it. 14-14 with 2.17 to go in this first half. 17 is, is all the time in the world for the Idaho Vandal offense. John Freeze and company will come out here with 217. That could be 12 minutes and 17. They don't even need it. They could come down the field in no time and score on you. But Eastern coming back after that causing that fumble, pretty good defensive ball club, especially their secondary ranked first in the conference. Both teams.
teams have all three timeouts remaining, by the way. 50. Good ball game so far. We expected it to be. A lot more on the line than just to the Big Sky Conference. Last year, the Vandals beat him 27 to 10. Scott Linehan had his best day ever as a Vandal in that ball game. Who can forget the playoff game of 85, though, when Eastern and Jamie Townsend worked it down the field and pulled one out in Dennis Erickson's last game here with Idaho. John Jake returning for the Vandals, and John continues to... Oh, there's a little, uh, a little something after that play, too, breaking out. I think the referees are going to be glad when halftime, maybe they can, uh, some of these players can go and douse their head in ice and cool off a little bit because tempers are flaring. So the Vandals take it over, first down and 10, just short of the 30-yard line. You know, this is going to be a good test for John Freeze. You remember his last play, he really got popped from the blind side, didn't see it coming. That had to shake him up a little bit. I wonder if he's going to be a little gun shy. I really haven't seen that much this year. He's been hit twice hard in this game. First and ten, Freeze from the pocket. Down the middle, Slater was there. Oh, yeah, there's a the flag. No question about that one. Looks like they were Siamese twins going down the field. You can't do that. You can play defense, but you can't hold somebody. We'll watch it again. I think it was Brad Baker, maybe, number 51, who was following him and had his arm wrapped around him. You cannot do that. First down for the Vandals. Shows you the confidence the Vandals have in their backup tight end and Chris Slater going back to him once again. Of course, that big play on the last item of possession. Defensive pass interference. 51. First down. Chris Slater is still a, kind of a big guy. He's six foot three, so only gives up an inch as far as height to Robinson. But uh, Jeff, he's pretty slight. The difference in weight between he and Robinson, 230 pounds is Craig Robinson, and Slater at only 209. Pretty quick, though. Pretty quick tight end. First down and 10, the Vandals at the 45. He's in the pocket. Throws. Got Jake going. He's knocked down short of a first down. Well, Jake knew where he had to go to get the first down, but there was just no way he was going to escape the grasp of the defender. That looked like it was Quentin Blythe on the defense for the Eastern Eagles, and he just couldn't quite get it. Good defense. Uh, 58 to the linebacker, Gilmore, and then Blythe finally making the play. Second down and a yard at the 47 of Eastern. Mantles of the clock rolling. 135 to go in the half. And Todd Hoynes with a first down inside the 45. Still three timeouts remaining, and Steve, like you said, that's a lot of time to give John Freeze to 10 to go on the clock. Oh, especially where the ball is right now, too, Jeff. It's over on the side of the Eastern Eagles. It's on uh, the Eagle 45-yard line, so that's not far to go, especially when you're riding the arm of a John Freeze. That clock is melted down to a minute 18 right now, though, and running. Harris leaves the formation. Freeze looking to throw quickly over the middle. The Ocean Morris dragged down short of a first down. Another nice defensive play by Core. Hey, he was on him too. Andre Core was all over him like a blanket, but just a nice pass and a great catch by the Ocean Morris too. That's some good handwork right there by the Ocean Morris to catch that pass. And good handwork by Core to bring him, to bring him down. Second down and one. Freeze passes it up the sidelines. a mismatch. It was Lee Allen against a strong outside backer. That was Brad Baker and uh, Lee Allen just had him twisted all around. It reminded me of like Steve Largent last week's game as he had those guys every which way but lose. This time uh, Lee Allen had him wide open. Got it out of bounds too. 46 seconds to go. The battles are knocking. 14 straight. That's 14 straight. Uh, as you hear Pat Weiss over our shoulder let us know that John, after a little bit of a slow start, <laughs> and you just don't even realize that. I had no idea it was 14 straight completion. He started out two for five, and now 14 straight. First down and 10 at the 13. Freeze looking over the middle. Jorgensen had it, but couldn't hang on. Oh. He got nailed. He got nailed. Get up, Eric Jorgensen. He is not. He's not moving. He got hit by three guys. Boy. You hate to see that, but boy, he got popped not by one guy, not by two guys, but three guys. I thought he was laying there just because he was frustrated, and then, oof. It looked like, I don't know if this is a catchable ball or if it's thrown just a little bit behind him. 
We'll watch it again. Just a straight drop back by Freeze. Looks over his left side. Ooh, ooh. Oh, he got hammered between those two guys. That was a free safety. Jason Elliott who delivered the blow. Watch it from the ground level. See number 17 and number 35 helping out a little bit on that too. Kevin O'Connor. Well, they've got Jorgensen sitting upright. That's a good sign. Break out the smelling salts. Well, he did take a pop. Well, you know, O'Connor is down too. You can't see it in the picture right there, but a little to the left of the screen there, O'Connor is also down for Eastern. Well, Jorgensen's getting up under his own power, so he'll be glad it's only 42 seconds. Boy, he's a little washy getting up. He did take one magnificent hit, though. Forty-two seconds to go, and uh, now O'Connor is going to be okay. Also, as you see, Jorgensen get up, and there's O'Connor. O'Connor walking off his power too. So both people walking off the sidelines a little gingerly, but underneath their own power as they're taking Jorgensen out of the building right now, back into the dressing rooms, Jeff. He's still not walking very well. Start asking questions like, "What day it is? <laughs> Who we playing?" Star. <laughs> Well, that was a hit. Good camera work once again by our KUID crew. And there's an end zone view of it. Second down and 10 from the 13. John Freese checking things out before he takes the snap from Steve Unger. That's the Ocean Morris number five through the picture. John for the end zone. John Jay! It was out of the end zone. Oh, and John Jake is not happy, and neither is Lee Allen. Lee Allen was coming in from the right side, had a good view of it. He says, hey, we made it. But they're going to say no way as he was out of bounds, out of the end zone. Oh, this is as close as you can get. Look at that pass. What a great catch, too. Does he come down in bounds? No, nope, good no. call, good call. He was about a yard out. Pushed out by the defender, Quentin Blythe. Nice play defensively. Quentin Blythe, they're picking on him a little bit tonight, Jeff, and he makes a great defensive play this time. Third down and 10, 37 seconds, first half. We're tied at 14. Breeze, same play, this oh. time overthrown to Jake. John Jake had his man beat by just a step. Once again, who was it they're picking on? Quentin Blythe, number one. They're going step for step with each other, and just a pass thrown about a yard over Jake's hands. There was no chance for a reception. We've seen John Freeze make this connection with John Jake more than one time in the corner of the end zone. Jake came into the ball game with six touchdowns to his credit. That's second best in the conference at the receiving end. I still think that's one of the prettiest plays in football. Just throw it up there in the corner of the end zone. Now remember, the holder here on this play is normally Eric Jorgensen, but backup quarterback Steve Nolan will come in to hold it, and Brian DeSicchio misses off to the left. You can hear that he missed that one. He really scuffed it on the kick. It was off to the left, no good. We remain tied, 29 seconds to go. Wow. So Eastern comes away with a sigh of relief. Yeah, they're coming away uh, breathing a little easier right now, 29 seconds. I don't know if they'll want to go for a bundle this deep in their own territory or just keep it on the ground and be content with a 14-14 halftime score with only 29 seconds to go. Three timeouts to go, first half. See how John Snyder approaches things. Snyder back after two weeks injured. He looks top form right now. And he's going to hand it off to Tony Johnson. And look out. Johnson finds a seam up the near sidelines and gets out of bounds at the 40. Boy, big play. I'm impressed with the young freshman Tony Johnson. Like we talked about, kind of a big guy, about 195, almost 200 pounds. Has excellent speed out of the backfield. And Eastern has spent a timeout with 16 seconds to go. It only gives them a little bit more breathing room. Maybe with 16 seconds to go, you want to air it out a little bit. They're down on the 40 yard, their own 40 yard line with 16 seconds to go. And you got a guy like Eric Stein, who, although he is not connected on field goal tonight, there's some things to keep in mind that we talked about earlier in the ball game. The Vandals first in the conference in passing, and the Eastern uh, down on the list. But look at pass defense, Steve. They got the two best pass defenses and pass sitting offenses in the conference here tonight. And look right behind now in the rushing offense, EWU ranked last. 57 yards a game is all, hey, they've got a lot more than 57 yards on the ground in this game, I think, in the first half. They're really looking good that way. 
Interesting to see how many total offensive yards Eastern has so far in this game, 273. They will probably go well over that tonight. 16 seconds to go. John Snyder sets his Eastern Eagles. 14-14 long game. Wideouts both sides, wing left, one setback for Snyder. And Snyder's had time to throw, and he'll float a screen to Johnson, and Johnson gets met by, uh, met by Kevin Johnson, who throws him out of bounds. They did get out of bounds. Eight seconds to go now. We'll watch it again. Eight seconds to go, Steve. 14-14 game. Snyder, little screen. Johnson, uh, I think Kevin Johnson played it well. I think Snyder might have taken too much time setting that play up, Jeff. The, they had 16 seconds to go. They probably wanted to get within field goal range. And, boy, he went back a little bit too nonchalantly. Took eight seconds off the clock. They got it out of bounds. Eight seconds to go. And they're not even close to field goal range right now. That was number 75, Steve Hine, who was trying to make a block on Johnson. But like you said, maybe just taking a little bit too much time, letting it formulate. See Keith Gilbertson walking down the sidelines. And... Uh, Go in at halftime. Looks like he might go in tied up. 14-14. John Freeze, good picture of the quarterback. So he looks like without the helmet. He's taking some pretty good pops. He and Eric Jorgensen are going to go in there and talk about some war stories at halftime. Well, interesting situation here. Is Snyder going to try to throw it down there far enough to get Eric Stein in field goal range? Or is he going to go deep and maybe burn Idaho for a big one? Whatever he does, he's going to have to do it a little quicker than that last play. Eastern with one timeout remaining. That's Bensley who comes set in the slot. Long count by Snyder from the 42 on second and seven. Here comes the rush and Corey Smith knocks him down at the 35. That about does it. Halftime. Final play of the half. Take a look at it. Idaho in the prevent defense, Steve. Well, they were. They were in the prevent. Court Smith, number 99, coming up there, knocking him down. Last play of the half. Court Smith, excellent. There's uh, an example of the time Freeze had, but all of a sudden, from nowhere, and big number 94 Eastern, and that was uh, Mike Kruzich. That was hit number one. Right. This one's Ty Hoynes going through and scoring the first touchdown of the ball game for the University of Idaho Vandals. And John Snyder to his big tight end, Aldrich. This set up the first score for Eastern. This is the score right here. Tony Johnson going in for the score. Tony Johnson's been doing a good job because the starter, uh, Vernon Williams, has been out. Freeze, once again, this is a good example of how much time, and it was an excellent pass. That was to John Jake. Freeze again going over the right side this time. I think that was Jorgensen going up in a crowd to make that touchdown. And here's the run by Bruce Harris. Uh, great block by Hoynes and Chris Sly uh, Slater sweeping out on that play. This is uh, Tony Johnson one more time, breaking a couple of tackles, bringing it down. 44-yard field goal fake. This was a good play. Almost got him, but the Vandals converged quickly to bring him down just before he gets over to the first down marker. From the angle we looked at it, it almost looked like he kicked it. Once again, Freeze setting up over on the right side. That was a nice looking play. That was a very nice play. Snyder. Snyder had a good first half. This is the touchdown pass. Jamie Bensley. And John Freeze to Eric Jorgensen, and that is the shot he took. Uh, it didn't look quite as bad at that angle, but he really got nailed by the free safety. And Brian DeSicchio failing on a field goal attempt. <laughs> this is the last play of the first half. Cord Smith, number 99, coming from the right side. No time. John Snyder had no time on the clock, and the clock wound down. That's where we stand, 14 to 14 at halftime. 14 yards in the ground, and coming into the game, EWU had 57 yards average per game. They have 92 in the first half alone, so the Eagles have 218 yards to 203 for the Vandals. Time of possession is pretty even. First down is pretty even. Turnovers, only one turnover each team. And both teams cashed in on it, too, put it in the end zone. Very so, costly turnovers. You're exactly, exactly right. Total yards for Eastern. Uh, 
273 they average for the year and you can see right there with John Snyder in the lineup and also find Tony Johnson who's playing one of his better games that they've got that uh, not far away right now from what they're averaging here in the first half. Dick Zorns has got to be pleased with the 92 yards in the ground. You'll remember last week against Northern Illinois up in Joe Albion, Spokane. The Eagles were held to minus 26 yards on the ground. They Just looking on the sidelines, Jeff, and they... Uh during the breaks, they had the camera over on the sidelines, and I have not seen number six anywhere around. Yeah, or Craig Robinson, another man to consider number 85. We'll find out on this first series. And we get word now they will not return, and we'll tell you more in a second as Lee Allen gets it to the 25 before he's knocked down. Aaron Jorgensen, as you might imagine, a concussion. And oh, torso ligaments in his left knee. Oh, that is just bad news. And he Luminary says also, Jeff, that he could be lost for the season. Yeah, that is just uh, mounts the uh, adds to the mounting injuries Idaho's had all season long. Well, they definitely have. But Chris Slater's done a good job since filling in for Craig Robinson in this ball game, and he is a good one. And the Idaho's set to go. First down and ten at the 25. John Freeze, five in out in the pattern, swings it to Todd Hoynes. And Hoynes for about four. Utilizing a safety valve again. He's looking up the right side or the left side, trying to find somebody out on a fly pattern. Nobody was there. Hoynes got the call and picks up a couple yards. And Todd Hoynes was getting up a little bit slow, it looked like, out of the bottom of that pile up. See if uh, Hoynes is going to have to limp off. Boy, boy, you wonder. Oh. When it rains, it pours. One reprieve, the Vandals did get Bruce Harris back this week. He played a pretty good first half for the Vandals. And Idaho right now with David Jackson, you see him going in motion after being lined up as a running back. Breeze up the far sidelines, and Jackson's the target for a first down. Well, they put him in motion, and he is the man who comes down with it. David Jackson, number 25, another small guy, 5'7", 152-pound sophomore. He's the guy at the top of your screen in motion. He just skirts it up the left sidelines. Freeze goes, isolate, get him, and good enough for a first down. And he beat the eastern linebacker, the middleman, Alan Gilmore. So you got the middle linebacker on David Jackson. Definite mismatch. First down and 10, the Vandals from the eastern 46. First possession of the second half. 14-14 ball game, and we're early in this half. Bruce Harris. Loose football, and what do you know? It's going to roll out of bounds. That'll give the Vandals a first down. Oh, that's designed as a play. They call that one a play. Bruce Harris just throws it out there, and then they get it another <laughs> a first down. I'm just kidding. They can't do that. But boy, Bruce Harris got very lucky, Jeff. Let's see where the hit. Well, they just strip him right there. Oh, boy. Now, look the ball if you're going to get a chance to see it. There, just there it is. Oh. Andre Kaur was the guy coming up to strip the football away from Bruce Harris. Luckily for the Vandals, it went out of bounds, and the Vandals picked up a first down. At the 33. Point us back in there. Freeze. Intended for Allen down near the 10, overshot. You know, that's maybe the poorest thrown pass we've seen by John Freeze as he threw that one out of bounds. There was a flag at the, on the play up in the vicinity where it probably would be like an offensive holding call. We haven't seen a lot of flags in this game. Freeze going back, talking to one of his... Threats. That means he's talking to Chris Slater. You know, there has only been one uh, turnover by each team, and there has not been a lot of penalties. It's been a pretty well played ball ball game. They, both teams started out a little bit slow in the first quarter. They got things going in the latter part of that quarter, and then the sec start of the second quarter played pretty well, and then kind of slacked off in the last. Holding the on the offense, still first down. That is a call holding against the offense. So the Vandals uh, first down and 20 to go. Freezing that first half, by the way, 16 of 22 for 188 yards and one TD. Not bad numbers. One time he had 14 straight completions. And John trying to start another string, and he throws underneath and short, intended for Bruce Harris. Well, he had to throw that one quickly because of the rush applied this time. Uh, I believe it was DJ Seegertson coming in for Eastern. He had to get rid of it, then just a nice rush. Couldn't get quite get it over on the side to Harris, who made a lunging effort, but no go. Second down and 20. At the 42. 14-14 game, Eastern and the Vandals. The Governor's Cup, if you will. These two have met only six times in their history. Idaho winning four. Grace. And he 
set up the screen to Hoynes. Hoynes runs away from the tackler, lowers his head, and gets inside the 35. Hoynes did this on his own. He avoided a couple of tacklers. And remember, he got a little bit shaken up a couple plays ago, so he's a little bit hurt. But it didn't look like it this time. A little swing pass, number 20 in the backfield. Sets up, pretend like he's going to block, and then goes out on the pattern. Follows his blockers, escapes a tackle right here, and picks up another 10 yards. Good job. Back to near the original line of scrimmage. So it's third down and the 11 at the 33 of the Eagles. Morrison Jackson left. The veneer sign, Allen and Freeze over the middle. Now they're going to say, they're going to be rolling. That's a fumble. Uh, no, I think so. Well, they're going to say a catch and the ball downed. It Eastern looks, wants a fumble. But it looks like from the disgust on Eastern's face, they might say that it is going to be ruled afterwards. So that play stands for Idaho. Boy, Lee Allen really got nailed here when he made the crowd. Watch, Watch this again. again. Reverse angle. Breeze sets up, has good time. Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah, well, at least from here, and it, unless that ball somehow came out of there, and it looked like it, at least from here, it did not. It's like Jackson's back, it hit the ground, and Dent caused the fumble. Of course, he was down at that moment of contact. Vandals first and 10 at the Eastern 20. A couple of lucky breaks, a missed drive for the Vandals. Breeze. Swings it out to Morris. Neosha scampers away and gets close to first down yardage. Well, this once again, it was Neosha Morris against Andre Kaur, and Neosha just kind of shakes off Kaur and gets enough for the first down. The Vandals having a pretty decent looking drive. Gets it right here and just shakes him off, gives him a little stiff arm. Cuts it down, gets out of bounds inside the 15 yard line, all the way down to about 11. Neosha gave us a little smile as he went by our KUID camera. Second down and a yard at the 11. The handles on this drive had a ball roll out of the hands of Bruce Harris. Out of bounds for about five more yards in a first down. Praise for the end zone. Incomplete. And picked off. Well, I couldn't even see that one happen. It happened so fast. The ball coming out of the hands of the intended receiver. And Watch it again. I think that that was Quentin Blythe, wasn't it? Right, Number one Quentin coming Blythe. down with it. He's the guy they picked on a little bit. Boy, oh. he got his head ripped off. That's <laughs> Simon Blythe right there to come up with the interception, first interception of the ball game. Reverse angle, watch it again. Boy, what a shot by number 17 right there, Jason Elliott, the free safety. He clobbered the intended man. The intended man was David Jackson, who goes back a little bit wobbly, too. First down and 10. There is some vicious hitting going on right now. At the 20, John Snyder. And Vernon Williams is back in the backfield, and Williams gets the throw. Cord Smith. <laughs> Cord Smith. Playing some good ball. Had a great game last week. Continuing it again this week. Does a good job of getting through his blockers. Stopping him. You know, Jeff, this game looked like it was going to turn into a pretty good offensive struggle there in the second quarter, the early part of the second quarter. And all of a sudden, since then, it has stopped and has become a defensive uh, specialist type of a game. Second down and 10. Williams able to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Vandals with a four-man front. Pete Wilkins playing at the defensive end. He started at linebacker. Long count by Schneider from the I formation. Johnson runs up through an avenue and brings it out over the 25. Johnson had a better ball game by far than Williams has in this game. Jim Rudis coming up and doing a good job defensively for the Vandals. Number 75, pursuit following the play, comes up, helps out make the tackle. Big third down and four play. Been a wild second half so far. The Vandal crowd coming alive, trying to get the defense a going. Here comes Ernest Sanders on a blitz, but Snyder throws quickly to Bunchley, and I think he's going to have enough for the first. Let's see if we're, the spot is going to get him enough. He has oh, to get, looks like, close. on the Vandal side of the 30, and when they're spotting it, it looks like it's going to be on the Vandal side of the 30. And I thought where he caught it, he had the first down with the spot. It's a first. It is a spot. They did bring it out to about an extra yard or so on the spot. So nice play by Snyder and Bunsley to pick up the first. They needed the necessary yardage and picked her up. 
hit right there. Boy, I think that might have been uh, somebody else from behind, too, Steve, that stripped the ball out of there. Reach, just reached around yeah, and yeah, stripped it out. Couldn't tell who the, the number was, but then Virgil Paulson, number 29, coming up to pounce on it, and the battle's get it. First down and 10. Linus. And the Hulkwim product buries his way to the 21, very near a first down. They're going to spot him a yard short. Nine yard carry on that one by Todd Hoynes. We'll watch it again. You saw six foot one, 207 pound Todd Hoynes. Gets it over the left side, a couple of good blocks again, but then just does it, it just uh, got right through a tackle right there. Picks up good yardage, second and about one and a half to go. Finally taken down by Kevin O'Connor. Second and a yard. Trip set to the near side, and Harris leaves the formation after the left. Brees with time, fires, Slater, first down to the 10. Chris Slater, you'll remember, came into the ball game to replace the injured Craig Robinson, who could possibly be out for the season for the Vandals, doing a good job. He's had about three catches. This time it picks up enough for the first down. The Vandals at about the 10-yard line. You know, with all the Vandals you know, in depth, that's, that's what's gotten them where they are right now, Jeff. They've had so many injuries this season, but they have such good depth. This is a second string tight end, Chris Slater, coming up with a big, nice grab for a first down. And a good looking one, too. First and goal. Linus. Ha oh, oh. ha. He took that up the middle. He was supposed to go and look like off right guard. Saw that there was an opening, an open avenue right up the middle. Took it up there, bounced off a couple of people. Caught a hoinus. He did that on his own. Ten-yard touchdown run. Watch. He looked like he was going to go over there, but then just thought of the, the opening right up the middle. And took it, played a little pinball, bouncing off a couple of people, and scores a touchdown for the Bandlers. Good line blocking, but an eight great individual effort. About three times worth for Hoynes. Good reaction time. Saw the little hole open and just took it right down. CPO for an important PAT, and he knocks her home, and we've got a 21 14 ball game. Timeout, 9.48 to go. People tonight, Pat Weiss and Mark Stokes, and with 9.48 to go in the third quarter, and the Vandals, after losing it on an interception, getting it back on a fumble, finally end up with a Todd Hoynes touchdown run. CPO. Too. Watch it again. Just kind of took his eye off up for just for one split second. That's all it took, and the Vandals just about came away with another big one. That's Dominique Core, his brother Andre, playing on the defensive side at the cornerback position. You know something, Jeff, in this ball game tonight, the Eastern Eagles have only turned the ball over twice. Both of those turnovers have resulted in touchdowns by the Vandals. Prepping on the run back, still first down. See, that took a lot of time off the clock, too. 45 seconds is all 30 yards on four plays and that Hoynes four-yard run. But two turnovers in the ball game, and that has cost them. We talked about it earlier, a very opportunistic ball team are the Idaho Vandals. You give them a chance like that, they're going to take it. First down and 10, but Eastern starts in a hole at the seven. Well, the Eagles 
Browns are playing conservative. They're so far down in their own territory. They started this on the seven-yard line. They want to keep it on the ground, hopefully get some more yardage to maybe play with, but not this time as about the whole right side of the defensive line for the Vandals converging to make the stop. You saw number 99, Cord Smith, get great penetration. Kevin Johnson and Charlie Oliver turn to play inside. Picture-perfect defense. Second down and 10 at the 7. trying to change the play in this crowd trying to keep him from doing that. Yeah, he calls time out. There's no way anybody's going to hear him. Nine all one to go in the third quarter. The Vandals and the Dome rocking. In Minnesota, they've got the Metrodome. At Idaho, they've got the Kibbe Dome. And that's exactly what we're hearing right now. Snyder came up to the line as if to say, I cannot hear. He's not the only one. Boy, this place is just going crazy. In our crowd, I would say, well, let's fill up a little bit more. Uh, probably right up around uh, 10,000 here tonight. Yeah, pretty decent crowd looking over at the students. Quite a few students on this side where we are, or the parent side and everything. There's a lot of them. Pretty good crowd, and uh, they're witnessing a good football game. The officials, I'm not sure if they're telling the Vandals don't encourage noise. That could be the case. Yeah, look, the Vandals are trying to quiet everyone down. <laughs> I think this crowd is going to stand for that. Second down and 10 at the 7, and again, Snyder cannot get the ball snapped. The Blue Birds come out on that one as Snyder, you cannot hear. The Idaho Battle defensive team is trying to quiet down the crowd. But the crowd is very much into this ball game as you see some of the partisan Idaho Battle crowd. make noise, I think, was that signal. <laughs> see, yeah, the they're camera. waving at somebody, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> at the cameras, Keith Gilbertson hoping that everybody needs a little bit more quiet. Second down and ten still from the seven. And Eastern Ophana get one launched here. Complete brings up a third down and ten, another passing down, but uh, Eastern is not being able to do anything here in the second second half. Yeah, the Idaho defense is playing pretty tough. First possession, the Eastern fumbled it away. This possession, they got driven down deep in their own territory. It's third down, ten to go on about the eight-yard line. 8.56, third quarter, 21-14. Idaho and Eastern, the Vandals right now with a seven-point lead, but we see quite a battle far tonight. Third down and down. The Kibbe Dome again coming alive. Long count. Ball cut by Jefferson, but the Vandals are there. The Kendrick Jackson, I think, was the man the initial made the stop. He stopped the runner from getting any farther. The battle stop him should probably get some pretty decent field position. Although we are going to be faced with the number one punter in the nation. Now watch it again. I think it was number 21, Kedrick Jackson. Yes, it was. Getting up there, making the first stop. With John Blaze, number 18 and 51 on top of it. Jerry Medved. Here's Stein, who's kicked a couple beauties tonight. Oh, he gets another nice one. Line walking boot taken at the 45 by Lee Adam. Oh, penalty flying down. Lee thought he might have had a chance at it, but I think we're going to see this one called back. Looked like he might have just uh, about had a shoestring tackle right there. He might have been off to the races, but it's probably going to be a clip. 43-yard punt again by Stein. He came in averaging that. He's and hit that a couple of times tonight. He likes that average. <laughs> Whoa, oh. face mask. Where well, that flag went down, you thought for sure it was going to be a offensive penalty, or at least a, a penalty on the return. Five-yard face mask against the defense on the run back. It is hurt first down. Yeah, where that flag was thrown, Jeff, it was kind of behind the play into uh -huh. the side, so it would be where it usually would indicate a clip, but hey, the battles will take this, gives them five more yards. It was a five-yard run back, give them another five more, that's ten yards. Raised the harness on the counter. Boy, he's really got 
fire in his eyes tonight out there. Five-yard pickup by Todd Hoynos on the counter. Watch how quickly he finds the hole and gets through it, Jeff. Right there, it opens up for just a moment. That's all it takes for Todd Hoynos. He takes it over the left side, picks up six yards. 17 clock running third quarter 21 14 Idaho second down and five in case you missed it Eric Jorgensen out with a concussion as Bruce Harris is ripped out of the backfield nowhere to go this time for Bruce Harris good defense coming in there was Doug McGill I believe was the first man for Eastern senior out of Seattle 6'4 218 Nice good play. picture of him right there, number 59. Wanted to finish the story. Craig Robinson also out with knee ligament damage, and the early word, he may be gone for the year. So the number one and number two receivers for the Vandals out of the ball game right now. Chris Slater's done a good job replacing Craig Robinson in the game, though. He has. Third and nine. Bray fires. was the man coming up with the interception for Eastern on this one. There's a flag on the play on the run back, I would imagine. Wait and see what's going to happen, but once again, the ball tipped and the tip drill comes into effect. Number 19, the strong safety, Pat Ogden was the guy coming up and getting the interception. You wonder, was there any interference? Oh, Zorn's oh. on the field and a warning from the official. We uh, medal our way through this. Taking a timeout with 7.28 to go, 21 to 14. Dick Zorns is pleading right now with the officials. Yeah, he's still on the field. He wants to get hit. You can see him right there. That's his head just at the bottom of the screen. That's the head coach for Eastern Dick Zorns. He's not very happy with that call. See the little powwow going on right now down on the far end of the field. But I honestly didn't see it to do. No. I was too busy watching the ball. It seemed like it was kind of a light flag, too. We'll watch it again. We're going to see if there is some contact with the intended man. Breeze goes back, has all the time in the world. It's really kind of hard to tell, isn't it? I didn't yeah, look at that much. Could have been offensive pass interference, maybe if nothing else. Matt Ogden, anyway, the strong safety coming down the base. stepped in front and played a pretty good defensive team play but no the referee right there says no. yeah he got, unless maybe he got caught. unless maybe he was uh, over the shoulder just a little bit but uh, definitely going for the ball tough call Zorn's not very happy and you know he might have a legitimate gripe right there first down and ten the vandals moving it by a uh, pain penalty 728 third quarter at the 28 Harris and Bruce does a nice job to run for about five yards. The Vandals this evening have been taking it over their left side all night long. This time Bruce Harris, they've been using either Hoynes or Harris over the left side. This time it was number two, Bruce Harris. And Harris picks up some, a couple more yards, about four yards on the play. Second and five. Seven minute mark, third quarter. Next week, it's off to Ogden and Weber State, the conference leaders. And John Freeze, as he comes up on second down and five, wants a T.O. But how about that game next week, Steve? Uh, Weber State now 4-0 in the conference. The Vandals 3-1 uh, right behind. But that is going to be a big one next week. That's going to be a very big one. The Idaho Vandals would love to go down there and knock them out of first place, go for a tie, possibly, if they can escape the Eastern Eagles tonight. And Weber State, you know, they're playing some good football. You see next Saturday, October 31st, is Halloween. All Hallows Eve, anything can happen. But it uh, should be a great ball game. Guys to watch for in that Weber State game, Fine Unga, who is one of the conference leaders. He is a good one, a transfer. Also, of course, Sean Sanders has kind of taken a back seat to Unga this year. The job he's been doing, and an excellent quarterback in Jeff Carlson, who's going to come out of the doldrums and led Weber State so far this year. I don't think anybody expected Weber to be leading the conference. Many thought they would be one of the teams that are much improved, but there they are at 4-0. Vandals, by the way, after the Weber State trip, then must go to Bozeman and play in some frigid weather against Montana State. And finally, the season finale here at home in a game we'll have against Boise State. 
Boy, you state that is always a good one. This year should be no exception. If you're going to come, get here early, because I imagine this place will be jamming. It's going to be hot and heavy here. That'll be a good ball game. Always is. Second down and five of the 23 after the timeout. Freeze to throw with time and all kinds of it. Up the left sidelines. Incomplete. He got uh, away with one there, Jeff. That ball was put up there for grabs. Two people converging. And uh, was it Jake was on the, was the intended receiver, I think, on that play. A couple guys there. And Quentin Blythe, number one, is the man who's matched up on him. Maybe just a little bit too lofty this pass by John Freeze. And he got kind of lucky because Quentin Blythe had a pretty good defensive read and almost came away with a reception interception. So it's third down and five. with Morris, Allen, and Jake. One, two, and three in the trip set right. Slater, the tight end left. Rush coming in three. Jumps it off to Hoynes, and Hoynes is upended. Wow. Like three. Clinton Blythe. We talked about Blythe earlier, like they were picking on him, and maybe he felt that way. He says, well, I'm just going to respond all over the place, and he's been doing it. He has. They picked on him a little bit in the first half. The second half, he's been the hero defensively for Eastern. Freeze. Faking like he's going to go over to the left side, just swings it out in the flats to number 20, Hoynes. Quentin Blythe right there to bring him down. Another blitz coming that time by Eastern. They put more pressure on the Vandals than I think anybody has this year. Remember now the holder, Eric Jorgensen, unavailable with a concussion, so backup quarterback Steve Nolan, the holder, and DeSicchio bombs a long one that is good. Flag on the play. Penalty flying down. Sides Eastern. Now let's see. That is that wouldn't even be close to a first down for the Vandals. So they'll go ahead and take the 40-yard field goal. Six oh four to go in the third. And the Vandals up the lead to 10, 24, 14. Offensively here in the second half, the Eastern Washington Eagles, Jeff, just not getting on track. They uh, had a couple of miscues, and they had a couple of bright, bad breaks, too. Like the last interception that they got looked like they were going to have some pretty decent field possession. But uh, terminated, it was, it was not an interception after all. Rolled on an interception. Actually, the pass interference in the battles, another uh, big break. The battles took advantage of that and scored on a Brian DeCicchio field goal. So if we get a shot at Dick Zorns, he is still red-faced and irate with the officials on the sidelines around the 45-yard line. You know, he, I mean, we hate to keep harping on it, but he might have a legitimate gripe on that one. It was tough from our vantage point on both those angles to see if there was any contact prior to when we saw it, but uh, the referee was right there, too, though, so apparently something was to happen. And he wasted no time in throwing the flag, either. Now, the five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, so the CEO will kick it off from the 40. the squib variety or kick it off deep last time remember the ball was fumbled by dominic core he's been kind of going uh i bet this one's a long one seems like he's been alternating okay i'll say squibs it you're right and it's taken by one of the up backs who Shuffles it back to Core, and Core with a pretty nice return up to the 30. That was Steve Shiroki, who made a nice little toss back to Core, who runs it up to the 30-yard line, and it's first down and 10 Eastern. Dick Zorns must have told his up backs that if you get it to just pitch it back to one of our speedsters, and this time they got it, they threw it down there, and it worked for him. The last man was scoring by the 43-yard DeCicchio field goal. It took two minutes, 23 seconds, and uh, eight plays for three yards. The six minute mark, third quarter, 24 14 Eastern, first down and 10. Oh, the tight end, Aldrich dropped it. You probably won't see that happen too, but too many times in the season. Number 89, Brooke Aldrich, the senior, has the sure hands coming into the ballgame. One of the leading receivers for Eastern on the right side had it in his hands and dropped it. Oh, he's going to want that one back. Brooke Aldrich, 6'5, 234 pound senior, out of short care, crest high in Seattle. Interesting note on Brooke, he lost several teeth in a boating accident this summer. <laughs> so, uh, that whole mouth guard. <laughs> his football doesn't get hurt, but his boating he gets hurt. Second down and 10 after the incompletion at the 30. Pro set formation, the crowd again buzzing. Snyder, the draw to Johnson, and Johnson runs for the first down. Nice play.
play that time. Good time to use the draw. Everybody thought pass. The use the draw gets the first down, does Johnson. Boy, I like the looks of Tony Johnson. Wasn't expecting to see a whole lot of action. Vernon Williams, the pencil dim starter. See again, he's actually listed as a third tailback on the team. And boy, he's making a good advance towards first team. He's looked very sharp so far in the ballgame. This time picks up 11 yards on the first down for Eastern. Remember Jamie Townsend, redshirt early in the season with an injury. He's had all kinds of injury problems in his career. Johnson again, rockets for about six. You know, there's nothing fancy with his running either. Like we talked about several times, he doesn't look like it, but he's listed at almost 200 pounds, 197 pounds, only about five foot seven. But uh, boy, he gets that full head of steam, and he's tough to bring down. Give him five on that. Second down and five at the 45. 5-10 to go here in the third. The Vandals, 24, Eastern, 14. Brunsley and Fleming, twin receivers out to the right. Play fake. Snyder going far up the right sidelines, intended for Bunsley. Boy, I thought Bunsley for a second was going to gather that one in. Kind of a dying quail, the legs. Uh, everybody was going to get there quickly for the Idaho battles in the secondary. We'll watch it again. Almost put it up for grabs, but you're right, they almost came down with it. Snyder. Boy, three vandals down there. I'm trying to see who was underneath it uh, on the coverage, but kind of hard to tell from here. Here's the Vandal offensive line. Steve Unger, number 53 in the center. Chris Hoff, 66, farthest to your right. Third down and five. Out of the eye formation. Snyder checking off right now. Johnson. Short of the first down, it'll be fourth. And that was Johnson's 17th carry of the night, and he adds yards 71, 72, and 73. Maybe even 74. See what they give him forward progress. How about Idaho State defeating Boise State, 35-32? Got a final on that, huh? That was a final. Weber State winner over Montana by three. What about these Bengals, though? The giant killers. <laughs> yeah, Lee. Of course, they're the only ones that have beaten Idaho at the conference. It's the big sky. Anything can happen. Fourth down, two to go. Stein to kick it. Another wobbly spiral, and Lee Allen fair catches it near the 10. There. 41 yarder. A little bit below par, but when you can say you yeah, kicked the 41-yarder, not too bad. No, really, it kind of almost makes you mad that you only kick the 41 yarders. We see some of the college students. Good students uh, turn out. Keith Gilbertson was more than thankful after last week's new winner of Reno. He says, those students don't know how much they mean to us. Well, you can get the adrenaline pumping. Boy, when the noise level rises like it has a couple of times tonight, that just uh, the team cannot help but hear that. The other team hears it, and they, uh, on the other end, they deflate a little bit, and it just inflates the egos and everything of the Vandals, and they get going. Vandals will start in a hole. First down and 10 at the 10. On the air, hash mark with a trip set left. Hoynes. Oh, nice hard running by Todd Hoynes. Five yard carry out to the 15. Gets right through the hole again, picks up those five yards, and they're always tough yards for Todd Hoynes as he gets up a little slowly once more. Watch the offensive charge in the line of scrimmage. Sealing down the blocks. I know that offensive line has been doing the job all season long. Todd knew all those guys just blowing people away, opening up those holes for people like Harris and Whitehead. Greg Hale, Steve Unger, Chris Hoff. Remember the freshman who was forced into duty because of the season-ending injury to Mark Schlereth. And Troy Wright. Second down and five, Bruce Harris. And nice defense by Eastern to cut him down. He had a good shot right there. Number 67, Todd New, doing a good job blocking. Those guys, guys don't get all the press in the world, but they're the ones that make things happen for the Vandals. Number 58, Alan Gilmore, the linebacker, making the play, as well as uh, number 51, who kind of turned the play inside, strong side linebacker, Brad Baker. Third down and two. Big down here for Idaho. 3-12, clock rolling, third quarter. The Vandals by 10, facing third and two at the 18. Freeze elects to throw. 
time he's got. He's got Lee Allen who makes the grab for the first. Well, he needed two yards, and Lee Allen got him about 10 yards in the first down for the Vandals. But all the time in the world, John Freeze, he had to go. All he did, we'll see it again, he had so much time, he just looked for the guy he wanted to get the ball to. He knew he just had short yards, only two yards to go. Do I want to go down the field? Do I want to go? No, let's go over to the side on the short side. And he got it into Lee Allen who picks up the first. Big conversion for the Vandals. 2.48. First down and 10, Idaho at the 28. Trip set, quick count, freeze, swings it out to Harris. Harris gets the block, over the 35, for about six. Okay, once again, this is the third time I mentioned this guy in the last couple of plays, but uh, Todd New, the weak guard, making a big, big play, springing him. Was that New that made the, the big hit? And you'll see it, I hope, in the bottom of your screen. Okay, there's one coming up here. It's going to spring him. Yeah. Get a couple guys lead out there. That was Todd New, I believe, right there. Todd New or Troy Wright, one of the two. It was a 60-something, either 67 or 63, New or Wright. Second down and three. Poynas. Gets a couple. They're straight ahead for a couple, and the Vandals are faced now with third down and probably one to go, a half a yard to go, maybe. Boyd is playing a good ball game. Oh, yeah, he is. He's still... It is a first down. Boy, was oh. that... Looked like he went down. It looked like he might have been a little bit short, but the spot of the ball gives him the first down. You know, Todd Hoynes has got to fill in capably because Bruce Harris still not back 100% from his uh, injured knee, and he's, Hoynes has just done a remarkable job continuing to do so tonight. And Hoynes off the field, gets a bat on the backside from Keith Gilbertson. First down and 10, Idaho at the 39. Putting together a... A ledge drive right now. A quick screen out to Harris, and Harris runs away from it. Oncoming tackler, and then, oh, they're going to spot him out of bounds, though, at the 42. Pretty nice move, though, to avoid a couple of tacklers and just kind of skated right through them, as a matter of fact. Watch this again. I'll tell you what, you know, you got Bruce Harris is in your backfield, but he's just as capable a receiver as anybody else in the receiver core. You can't see him step out. He, uh, he avoided a couple of people right there. Nice play. 42-yard line, gain of three. Second and seven at the 42. 24 to 14, Idaho. With Freeze, a trip set left. Four man in front for Eastern. Play fake to Hoyner. Freeze with time. And loads it deep down the left sidelines and diving, trying to make the grab Jake. Unable to. Around the 25. And that man again, number one. We've talked about him all night long. Quentin Blythe, the safety for Eastern Washington, the man who was guarding him, and it was just a very, very good coverage. Freeze lays it just over the intended receiver. Can't get it there, but Blythe right there to cover. That's a pass John normally makes. He's had more pressure than I think he's faced all season, though. Yeah, Eastern's done a good job of getting in there quick to force some quick passes by Freeze. Freeze still 26 of 37, 279 yards, and this one incomplete. And Jackson paid the price after missing it a little high. Well, I think those receivers, they've seen some uh, pretty pretty mean hits tonight, too, Jeff. Those receivers, when they go up, they've got to know that the Eastern Eagles are going to be there, and they're not going to go gently on them. We'll see it from the reverse side this time. And that ball uh, catchable, but a little high for David Jackson. Freeze, by the way, that's 70% completion. It's just a little bit under. Oh, here comes the Eastern rush, and great job by Clays to get it away. Oh, boy, did... I don't know how he got that away. I don't either. I thought I was going to get blocked. And it takes a nice roll. <laughs> He's got a great punt. Gets a good uh, hand from the crowd. Deservedly so, because I don't know how he, in the world that he got the ball And he turned away. it into a 41-yarder. <laughs> Not too bad. 112 to go. Third quarter. 24-14. The Vandals give up the ball to John Snyder and the Eastern Eagles. And you just see a total different attitude with this club with John Snyder in there rather than the backup. Silty, Chad Silty, who's been playing the last couple of games. First down and 10 Eastern at the 17. Out of the eye. Tony Johnson all oh, straighten up and knock down. Michael Bailey, number 98. First time we called Michael's number. That's one of the first guys in there. Jeff, Jeff will watch it again on the replay, but that's one of the first times that they've got in there and knocked down Johnson without too much of a gain. Johnson maybe picks up a yard on the play, and that's about it. 
And that is Michael Bailey underneath there from the back side to make the play. Nice play, Mike. Two-yard gainer, second down and eight of the 19. Snyder dropping the throw over the middle, and he's got his man, Todd Johnson, near first down yardage. Okay, this is not to be confused with Tony Johnson, the running back. This is a tight end, number 22, Todd Johnson. They list him as a tight end, 6'1", 214 pounds. I believe his first reception of the night. Just gets right in the middle, makes the reception. One of the only Idaho products on this club from Hope. 30 seconds to go, and they're going to have to measure this one. A little bit short. Just a little bit. Inches to go. Third down and inches. You saw it on your screen just how far it is to have to go. That's not far. Eastern needs something going, too, Jeff. With just 30 seconds to go here in the third period, in the second half, the Idaho defense has held them. They have not done much offensively in the second half. Third and an eyelash for Eastern. Crowd again comes alive. And I think he's probably got it. You saw I just uh, did not have to get very much at all. And that is a first down for Eastern, as you see the Eastern Eagle sidelines. And not a very happy crowd right at the moment, they don't seem like. Still all kinds of time to go in this game. First down and 10 from the 28. One of our final plays of the period may be the final play. 13 seconds to go on the clock running. Snyder tosses it back to Johnson. Johnson slices inside a block and over the 35 and brings it out to the 37 or near the 38, close to another first down. Good blocking up front east by Eastern, pulling out on that play. Coach Dick Sorens, and I still think he's a little bit fuming over that call not too long ago on a series in which Idaho went down and got a field goal out of on a pass interference call. That's not a happy face on that uh, Coach Dick Sorens. Here's the Idaho Vans. You'd think that these guys were losing by the looks on their faces, too. That's the offensive line. Tough Tough hombres. They look so young, those baby faces, <laughs> but boy, they go out there, they do a mean job. Yeah, you go line up against them. Uh -uh. First down and 10 at the 38, Eastern. Trying to get back in this one, they're still in it, but down by 10, needing two scores. Snyder off the play fake to the tight end, Aldrich for the first down to the 45. John Place coming up to make the defensive stop, too. Nice stop, but once again, we see the uh, first down, the momentum has kind of swung over to the side of the Eagles. Nice pass by Snyder, a little bit wobbly, but that doesn't matter. He gets there. Good enough for the first. Big yardage. With these two teams like to use their tight ends. Good example of why. First down and 10. Eastern at the 44, and that's Johnson again. I think what you can, you can, I can look down the sidelines and see... Vernon Williams is there, and I, I'm not sure if he's uh, banged up or not, but I think probably just because Tony Johnson is playing such a fine ball oh, yeah. game tonight, he's in there. Yeah, exactly right. Why take him out? Because he's playing so well, and he's watching stuff. He might be a first-round first candidate. He's been looking great. 20 carries, 89 yards on the night for Johnson. By far his best night as an eagle. Snyder again, changing the play. Jefferson right, Bunsley out to the left. Back to throw Snyder in the pocket, zings it to Bunsley, who circles back to the inside after picking up the first inside the 30. Well, this is the best drive of the second half for the Eastern Eagles. The Eagles, this time Bunsley picks up about 17 yards in the first down for the Eagles. Boy, comparing Snyder from last year to this is like night and day. He has really matured as a quarterback, only a sophomore, though. Getting pretty good protection again from his offensive line. Just swings it out there, and uh, Virgil Paulson got beat by a couple of steps. That pass came in, first down for the Eagles. That was a sophomore working on a senior. Bunsley, a nice-looking receiver. First down and 10, the Eagles at the 28. And the boys from Cheney trying to rally to score. Audibleizing at the line. The crowd does not want him to audibleize. They're getting into it again. He's going up top and dead. Bunsley's down there. No, can't make it. 
Charlie Oliver on the coverage. So you had a couple of GSL guys going at it there. Look at Dick Zorns on the sidelines too, Jeff. He's waving his hands up. He can't believe that. He thought there must have been some pass interference on that play. He is not happy on the sidelines. But watch it again. Look like pretty good defense. Both guys going for it. See what you think. Pretty wobbly pass once again, but oh, he was just coming inside. That's that's not pass interference. I didn't see pass interference. You see on Dick that. Zorns. This is uh, he's behind this guy right there. The man with a guy program sticking out of his back pocket. Not so, happy. Second and ten. Johnson loose football. Oh, Johnson fell right back on it. Did that ball take a happy bounce Johnson's way? Right back in the old bread basket. All he had to do was fall on it. And good defense again by the interior front line of the battle defense. Watch your ball come loose. This is one of those hops that you pray about. Jerry Medved, Rod Cecil, and Jerry Medved. His momentum took him right back over the ball. Third and 12 at the 30. Bunsley and Fleming left and right. The tight end Aldrich right. High formation backs Floyd and Johnson for John Snyder. He swings it out to Johnson. Johnson gets away from one. And then he's first caught out of bounds by Ernest Sanders. Mr. Sanders on a play like that. First one is Jerry Medved. Jerry Medved is the one who slowed him down, though, Jeff. You'll see number 51 will be the first battle defensive man into your screen. Pete Wilkins applying a pretty good rush. Makes him hurry up his pass just a little bit. You'll see number 51 come up and slow him down just a little bit. There's Medved. And then Ernest Sanders coming up to finish him off. Going the ball game and Todd Hoynes on the draw. First down over the 40. I think that kind of surprised everybody. They thought that Breeze was going to go back to pass. He hands it off on the inside to Hoynes. And uh, Hoynes does a good job picking up 11 yards and the first. Hoynes is having himself a great evening tonight. We'll watch it again. See the opening develop. Everybody kind of dropping back a little bit. The backer thought he was going to pass, wants to get back and open up a little hole. That's all Hoynes needed to see, and he scored it right past him. One thing we haven't seen tonight, we talked to Mike Cox, there's speed option in the offensive package tonight for Idaho. We haven't seen him yet again. Here's Bruce Harris, who pedals for about six. The Mounds want to keep this one on the ground a little bit as much as they possibly can. Take some time off the clock. Clock continues to tick with 11.57 to go. Bruce Harris getting up a little bit slowly, kind of almost limping off the sidelines. Boy, walking wounded of the Idaho Vandals. Some not walking, too. Like Craig Johnson, who had uh, some knee ligament damage and is expected to be lost for the season. That is really bad news. And Eric Jorgensen was knocked out of the ballgame with a concussion in the first half. Second down and three after the seven-yard carry. Fake draw. Three stepping up in the pocket deep down the left sideline zone. Oh, no, can't get it to John Jake. And Jake was well covered in the secondary. He was well covered. Maybe Freeze is just throwing it away as uh, the defense is converging on him. And Freeze threw it over the outstretched arms and out of bounds. Jake, no chance for that reception. From the Vandal Farm team of L.A. Valley. Oh, yeah, they do have an in with L.A. Valley. They've got the speedsters coming up from there. Glad they do. Third and three. This is a big down in the game. Very big down. 11.27 to go in the contest. Idaho leads it by seven. Breeze with time. Zings the pass to Dave Jackson who hangs on for the first. Jackson made a very nice catch. First down for the Vandals. And John Freeze with another pinpoint pass. Had to get it in between a couple of guys. But just an excellent pass or a catch by David Jackson. We're going to watch it again. Freeze all the time in the world. Sets up, looks over to his left. Now watch this pass coming right into your living room right between a couple of people. You can't have a better pass than that. Boy, again, the perfect example of some of the replacements coming off the bench and doing the job. Dave Jackson, Bruce Harris is buried. Man, we talked about earlier, Anthony Witten out of Seattle, 227 sophomore, used all of his weight to make that play. Bruce Harris is going, did you get the number of that truck again? Oh, right there, because there is nowhere to go. Well, the Eastern Eagles are a little bit fired up now. A good play like that defensively can get the old adrenaline pumping. Vandals still have the ball, second down 13. Clock continues to run, 10 and a half minutes. Vandals would like to play ball control right here and end up with a score. Freeze back to throw, near side. Morris, seven yards and out of bounds at the 35. 
Bring up a third and short. They have second and 13. Freeze goes back, gets it on the left side to Neosha Morris. Morris picks up about eight, ten yards and goes third down. And uh, when they spot the ball, it looks like third down about three. We'll watch it again. Three Freeze is racking up some pretty good yards. at the 30 with a first down. Bumped out by Blythe at the 25. I think Freeze, when he looked over to his right and saw Neosha Morris so wide open, was kind of stunned for a minute and then got it to him and good enough for the first down. Like you talked about, the Vandals would like to play some ball control, keep as much time going on the clock and go in there for the score. Look like they're having a pretty decent drive right now. Give credit to Andre Kaur who knocked him out of bounds rather than Blythe. First down and 10 from the 25, 10-23. Costa Harris, a stutter step move, and somebody tripped him up as he started to head up field, and I think that somebody for Eastern was Aaron Hansen, the defensive end, freshman out of Spokane. Looked like that play was designed for Harris to go to the outside, but he thought he saw an opening up in the inside, took it up there, good defense, dropped him. John Freeze, 308 yards on the night passing. Over the last three games, now 1,000 yards, over 1,000 yards in his last three games passing. 2,200 plus coming into the ball game. Three oh, pressures on here, and John will get nailed by three Eastern Eagles. First guy there was uh, linebacker Brad Faker, the 222-pound junior, six foot three inches. There was nowhere to go for John Freeze. Did a good job of not throwing the ball away. Could have been an interception. He just had to eat this one. Brad Faker, 51, and Alan Gilmore, 58. So it's another third down and 20, and that one kind of took Idaho out of field goal range, or at least made it much more difficult should they have to try it from here. 9.05 rolling. The clock ticking three, third and 20 for Freeze. Down the middle, oh, and Slater didn't see it coming. Well, Slater didn't look. It was one of those quick patterns again, but Slater wasn't looking. The defense was there anyway. Even if he was looking, the pass wouldn't have got there. Pretty good defense applied. We'll watch it again. Interesting situation coming up now, though, Jeff, with the spot of the ball. John Place is coming back in. He's going to be punting this ball away. Yeah, that would have made it a long, long field goal. Well, about a 52, 53 yarder. So Place will try to kick Eastern into a hole. Now, but the place is able to get it away, and he hit this one too well, and it finds the end zone. Now, that's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to try to get it out inside the team. Freeze hands it off to Harris, and Harris keeps on his feet. And that's for the 40. Gain of about five for Bruce Harris. Well, Harris tries to take it outside and brings it up the middle, picks up five yards, five hard fought yards. Second down and five for the Vandals. Eastern was sending the free safety Jason Elliott on that play, number 17, and Harris was able to sidestep him. He was coming up to play it right in the area where Harris was running it. You know, Jeff, going back to that last 47-yard punt by Eric Stein, what a valuable tool to have on your team. Somebody like that, to get in trouble down in their own deep in their own territory like they were. A punt like that just opens things up so bad, so good for their team. Here's Harris who gets hit after a two-yard gain. Watched again, it was the left side the last time. This time it's right side for Bruce Harris. Finds a little hole over the right guard. Gets a couple yards. It's third down now and about a one and a half to go. Tackles made by Gilmore, 58 the linebacker, and Todd Hubert. The sophomore defense will hit out of Goldendale. Third and three at the 42. Vandals by seven. Eastern faking blitz. Three is dropping to throw. And he's got his man. Todd Hoynes for the first down. Hoynes floating out of the backfield, knew where he had to go to get the first down, saw that red marker that you see on your screen, 
and got about a one yard past it for the first. Look at the valve again. Look at the time. I was going to say, look at that pocket time again for Freeze, Steve. Well, we talked about that all season long, Jeff. That offensive line gives him so much protection. He's a young quarterback. He's a real strong guy, but he can't take a lot of punishment. That offensive line knows it, and they're not letting the defense in there. They've gotten in there a couple times tonight, but hey, not very often. First down and 10. The Vandys with a trip set. And Bruce Harris scooting up to the midfield area. And the band is very, very happy to keep the ball on the ground. They're making some yardage that way, so why not give it to Bruce Harris on first down? Just right up the middle of the gut. Nice block by 53, Steve Unger, O'Day High School. Four-yard carry, second and six, ball right at the 50. Changing it just a bit. John Crow thought Neosha was going to make a one-hander there for a second. Just about had a circus catch. Nice job by Neosha, but a little bit too much pepper on the ball. Couldn't bring it in. Third down and six. Yeah, third down and six will be another passing down. It should be for the Vandals. Watch this on the reverse angle. Oh, he needed a little more Freddie Bolitnikoff stick him on his hands. He could have brought that one in. Well, here we have another big play of the ball game. Third down and six from the 50. Freeze, looks, throws, Morris, first down at the 40. And the Ocean Morris was uh, on the left side that time, coming in through the middle. All he did was kind of like a button hook, just stop, go in, stop. And the foul is right there, thrown perfectly by John Freeze in between a couple guys again. I think they practice this one. All he does is turn around. The ball is there. First down, Vandals. Split the defense there and just nailed Morris for the first. Now, the biggest thing about that is it keeps the clock running. And it's now showing 5.30 here in the fourth quarter. 24-17. It's been a good one. Minus. And he's high load. That's Hubert, the first guy, 97, to make the stop. Five minutes to go. Next week, Weber State, the opponent. Weber wins over the weekend. In case you missed it, Idaho State defeated Boise State. Just about knocks the Broncos out of the picture. Trip set to the near side. Jackson, Allen, and Morris. And freeze to David Jackson. Oh, great defensive play by Blythe. That was perfect, because I thought that there was going to be a touchdown. It looked like the ball was just perfectly thrown. It was perfectly thrown. Jackson had about a step on him, and Blythe just hurtled his body to get that uh, ball out of there. Just excellent defense. You can't ask for better. Look at that pass, too. Right on the money. <laughs> Great defense by Quentin Blythe. Vandals using a little more balance than normal tonight. They've rushed the ball 29 times and through the air, 47 attempts. Third down and 10 at the 39. Here we are looking at third again. Breeze back to throw, looking downfield and having time for the end zone. Oh, it looked oh, like he was Lord. tripped right there. There was contact there. Look at John Jake having the word with the official. It looked like uh, he was tripped because he was running as fast as he could, and then all of a sudden he stumbled, and we're going to watch this one again. You decide. There been a lot of marginal calls or no calls on pass interference situations. All the time in the world. The battle's not content just to go short yardage situation passes. They're going to go for the bundle. Now you... I didn't Boy, see he, might have, he might have just tripped by himself. I think so. It's hard to see from here as Blaze kicks it into the end zone, and it'll come back out to the 20, and Eastern's still not dead. 4.23 to go in the ball game. As you look at the Idaho sideline, we switch to the opposite side to Eastern. Blaze's punt goes 39 yards, and they'll bring it back out to the 20. A lot of time, 4.23 to go. Gilbertson not very happy. 
How do the battles, you know, Jeff, in a game where they're only a touchdown ahead with the ball uh, on third down, and instead of going short trying to get the to get the uh, first yard, first down, they will go for the bundle and try to get the touchdown, and they almost work for them. And we also had a flag down, too, I just noticed. Four twenty-three to go, 24-17. Next week, Eastern plays Northern Arizona. Uh-oh. Hey, the Vandal offense is back on the field, and the Eastern defense is coming back out. Either a personal foul or 12 men in the field. If you're an Eastern Eagle, that hurts. Well, Big Zorns has not, there he is again. You see him, straight, he hasn't been happy most of this game, and he's got to be a little bit perturbed at that. And his team has played a good game. Yes, they have. Only down by, you know, seven points, 24 to 17. They would have had the ball back. Boy, what a break. It lets the Vandals off the hook. A dozen guys in the field. Todd Oyn is shifting gears over the 20. Now I would imagine that the Vandals will get a little bit more conservative, Jeff. The clock ticking is 4 minutes and 10 seconds to go. Hoynes gets the call, goes over left side, picks up good yardage, picks up about 6 yards of the play. Eastern with one timeout is all left. Now we'll miss you the next couple of weeks as the Vandals go on the road to Ogden and Bozeman, but we'll be back here on the 21st. game with the Boise State Broncos. Bruce Harris slamming off right tackle and he goes down short of the 15. Short of the 15 and short of the 14 where it would have been a first down so the battles now face with third down as we have an eagle on the ground. Battles will be third down about a yard to go. A little bit shaken up but he's going to be okay and of course that's number that's Alan Gilmore number 58. He's played a whale of a ball game tonight. Yes he has. Good picture of John Freeze, walking over the sidelines, discussing things with Keith Gilbertson. Put profile on Gilmore, Steve, from Richland, works with the mentally disabled in the offseason. Third down and two at the 16. Another big third down play. Going to run the floor, and we'll see. Harris, penalty flag down as he squirts for the first. Let's find out. Should the Vandals hold on to win this ball game, Jeff? I think the play of the game is going to be the 12 men on the field. <laughs> that really hurt. You know, we have so many darn big plays in this game, it's hard to really yeah. put your finger on one, but that is, oh, at least lately. And this is offsides. This is going to go against Eastern, too. Oh, boy, when it rains, of course. Well, the Vandals would have had the first anyway, but Idaho will take the five and pick up a couple extra on it. You know, going back to that offside, first down. Going back to the 12 men on the field, they would have had the ball, and they would have had over four minutes to go, about four and a half minutes to go, which is a lot of time, and uh, they would have could have tried to bring it down, but now the Idaho Vandals have it, and they're just going to do nothing with ball control. They've got a first down. The clock is at exactly three minutes, and it's running. Keep an eye on the defenders trying to rip the ball out of the Vandals' arm right now. It's about the only hope they have right now is to try to do something like that, cause the fumble. Freeze to Linus, and it's hard to rip it out of his arms. And he drives it down to the five. We're gonna watch what a game Todd Hoynes has played for the Vandals. Exceptional evening. Should have seen him last week, just as good. Hoynes goes down to the spot of the ball right about on the five-yard line. Second down and four to go. The Vandals could make a first down, Jeff, if they get inside the one. They don't want to have to worry about that, though. No, they'd like the seven. 2.15 to go in the game. 24-17. Eastern Church section now trying to still get this crowd a little bit fired up. Well, it's been a good one. 24-17 to the Mandels uh, going to score again. I don't think Eastern should be ashamed of this ball game at all. As you see, Mr. Joe Grant over there, he's got to be happy right at the moment. Eastern a fine looking team, and they got back on track too after uh, losing last week. Look at some of the quick backs. Idaho leads the series 4 to 2, and Michael 5 to 2. Last year, Idaho won 27 to 10. Mitch Linehan had a field day. Anybody that will remember that 1985 ball game will never forget the comeback in the playoff game. Uh, Jamie Townsend. 
screen pass on his 10-yard line with time running up, raced it down deep in Idaho territory, and then the Eagles were able to punch it in from there. And Rick Warman was quarterbacking for Eastern End, and of course, he's now up in Calgary with the Canadian Football League. Fine-looking quarterback, and that's just one you'll never forget. That was also the game that was surrounded by controversy, Dennis Erickson's last game. Before officially releasing the word, he was heading to Wyoming. First down, just eight miles down the road in the Palouse, and the Cougars had a big win over Arizona over the weekend. Second down and four at the five. Bruce Harris trying to run away from the defender, but oh, Eastern strings it out well. That's Andre, Andre Cora, Cora right. And in linebacker help from Brad Faker. Andre Kors played a good ball game for Eastern defensively too, Jeff. As you see the handoff goes and Bruce Harris tries to get it outside number six following in pursuit. Grabs him at the line of scrimmage and grounds him after maybe about a half of a yard pickup. Clock continuing to run. Minute 36. Eastern with one timeout remaining. Kind of surprised they didn't stop it. Yeah, you think they'd use up their timeout and stop the battle. Third down and four at the five. Two tight ends, freeze a fake, throws for the end zone, touchdown, Slater! Chris Slater, he's the replacement for the injured Craig Robinson. He gets up, he's getting mobbed out in the sidelines. Another touchdown for the Bandles. Four, I got a five-yard touchdown to Slater. Watching those, Jeff, they have everybody right there. They've got like four guys out of the pattern, right in the end zone area, right in that same area. Chris Slater's wide open. They get it inside to him. Pattern in the end zone. Nobody even picked up Slater. Craig Robinson may be out for the season, but he's got a great punt replacement. Chris Slater's done it all tonight. Well, this sets up the big one next week down in Ogden. It'll be the 4-0 Wildcats of Weber State is the Ezekiel Labs extra point. And the Vandals 4-1 in conference. Penalty flag down on the PAT as well. This one will probably be added to the kickoff. A minute 22 to go, 31-17, the Vandals with the lead. And the penalties and turnovers have hurt the Eastern Eagles in the second half. Yeah, going back to the 12 men on the field, I still think that that might have been the most critical call of the ball game. They had 12 guys in there, and they could have had the ball with four and a half minutes to go. The 12 men gave the Idaho Vandals the ball back, they marched it down, they score on the touchdown. You see the seats beginning to empty. To score 31 to 17, a minute 22 to go. Nobody feels another victory for the Vandals. Yep, the Vandals will have to go down and slow down that high octane running game of Weber State. By Nay Younger, he has a good one. Sean Sanders. Battles play some pretty good ball though, Jeff. They're riding a little bit of a wave and coming off a big win up here and last week homecoming win and playing some pretty good football. Another man to keep an eye on next week will be Wade Orton, who also was a Big Sky Player of the Week in past weeks. In fact, he shared that honor with John Fries a couple of weeks ago. And Jim Carlson there, find a quarterback. No easy chore when you go to Ogden. The CKO, the 15-yard penalty, assessed after the PAT, so he'll kick it off from the 50. Kick a field goal for this range. Yeah, he can squib. But we'll see it squibbed again. What are people doing that squib? It's a funny bounce on the artificial surface. He's going to kick it deep. Maybe he was aiming for the goal pole, Steve. Didn't quite get the field goal. <laughs> Just a minute 22 to go, and John Snyder brings his club on the field down 31 to 17. That score really doesn't indicate how close this game has gone. No, the second half has just been some mistakes by the Eastern Eagles that have caused the Idaho Battles to get the ball back a couple of times. And they've got the two touchdown cushion. And Dick Zorns has to be a little bit frustrated with the play of, and uh, the miscues tonight. You see the last scoring drive for the Vandals. Look at that bottom statistic there. Yeah. 6.35, chewed up on the clock. Snyder. Lost it out to Johnson. Johnson stays on his feet and gets the first down, about a 15-yard gain after the 35. 
Johnson playing such a good ball game tonight. Once again, receiving this pass and getting about 15, 16 yards on the play. You know, Steve, we got this game over, but we still got a minute 13 to go and one timeout remaining, and one big play in this game could be turned around in a hurry. Snyder back to throw. Plenty of time, whips it over the middle, tip. Oh, Sanders had it, and John Place couldn't scoop it up. I thought for sure Place was going to come down with it, but the ball took kind of an awkward, awkward bounce off of his fingertips, and it was no go. Sanders is the first guy to get into your picture to knock this down, and John Place right behind him almost comes away with the pickoff. A minute and one to go. Second down and ten. Great, you could be along for another fine edition of Vandal football here on KUID. In two weeks, we'll be back with the Boise State game to wrap up the season regular wise, regular season wise. And we've got a timeout taken by Eastern, and we'll keep her right here. Well, big sky action over the weekend. Montana knocked off by Weber State, as we told you. Weber State 4-0, and, oh, and Montana, pardon me, uh, Boise State was beaten as well. Idaho State beat Boise State. Idaho State beat Idaho not too many weeks ago. This time they beat Boise State. And, well, I don't know. The Bengals are tough. So right now they've got the uh, bragging rights here in the state. Of course, they knocked off the Vandals a few weeks ago. Good look at Todd Hoynes. What a game he's played tonight. Just a hammer back for the Vandals. They gave him the ball when they needed to, and he uh, responded quite well. The ailing Bruce Harris, still not 100%. Todd Hoynes had to fill in. He did a great job. Second down and 10 at the 33. Vandals working in the secondary with Paulson and Sanders, Charlie Oliver, and John Plays. They're giving them plenty of cushion. the sidelines intending it for Johnson. Third down and ten. Well once again I don't think these guys can be uh, hanging hang their heads. They played a pretty good ball game just uh just didn't get on track offensively. That's Eric Jorgensen you see with a towel on his shoulder there. Boy he really got if you missed it earlier in the game he just got creamed in the end zone going for a ball. But he looks like he been knocked out for a couple seconds. Oh. He didn't move when he hit the ground. He did, see, he did suffer a concussion. He might have been knocked down for a minute. Snyder stops and throws. Nice catch in these punches there by Bensley. Nice play. Yelling out the play, this is the 88 special. First down at 10. See what the 88 is. Johnson. Dump it off underneath to Johnson, who's been so busy tonight, number eight. Johnson. Good, good. He's, he's made some, uh, I think Dick Zorn's very happy tonight. Boy, you think about the backs these guys are going to have. Jamie Townsend, who comes back next year, has another year of eligibility as he gets about 10 yards, but he'll have to measure it for sure. Johnson, who's emerging as a star, at least. If any indication from his Idaho game tells the story. And another guy they haven't used much tonight, Vernon Williams, who is a very fine back. Only a sophomore. A little bit short. A little shy, 28 seconds to go in the ballgame. I think it's safe to say that the Vandals will win another conference game. Also moved 6-2. and two. 88 special again. I don't know if you hear Snyder yelling that out. Swinging it downfield, Tim Floyd, great catch down near the 10. Beautiful catch. Beautiful catch by Tim Floyd out on the left side that time. Nice pass, but a great catch. Got to give a plug for my old hometown and Tim's too, of Othello. Yeah, Othello, you know, one of those powerhouses around the area. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm serious. Nice catch by Timmy. First down and 10. Snyder swings it out to Johnson. Johnson runs into Kevin Johnson, and Johnson throws him out of bounds, and a penalty flag on top of it. 
Yeah, this is going to go against the bounds. I'm sure a little bit of a late hit out of bounds. Well, I guarantee you Keith Gilbertson is not happy with the way Eastern is moving it down the field right now. Well, this is a lucky thing for the Vandals that there's only nine seconds to go because Eastern has uh, got a little bit of momentum on their side. We did, uh, did we get any indication here? I might have been looking away as far as the uh, penalty. Still talking it over right now. Maybe an inadvertent play, I don't know. Well, now we're going to see something finally walked off. Half the distance for uh, probably a little extra stuff after the play was dead. First foul on the defense. First down. I think what happened there was when the play was blown dead out of bounds, there was still an extra hit out there, so I think that's what it was. Snyder for the end zone. Timing pattern to Ben's Flag down. They're going to give him a touchdown on that. Oh, yeah, touchdown. Great catch by Bensley. Just wanted to make sure that he had a foot down. The official's right on it, and we'll see this play again. Let's find out what the flag's about now. Is it defensive? No timing pattern, just corner of the end zone. Watch the catch right here by Bensley. He just goes up there. Oh, he had a big bet. Oh, easily, yeah. He's like up five steps. So a touchdown scored by Eastern in the late going of this game. See what... Keith Gilbertson feels about this one. I imagine he's going to be very happy when the uh, clock sounds. Stein will kick the PAT. One thing we didn't mention about Eric Stein when he scored his points tonight, he also became the all-time Eastern scoring leader. Got to kind of apologize about that one. Stein kicks the extra point, just four seconds to go in the game, but he is officially the all-time leading scorer in Eastern history. Fine-looking kicker and punter. Boy, you possess both those qualities, and you make yourself a bonus baby in a big hurry. I think Zorns, I don't know if you saw it, but he just went out on the field, got down on his hands and knees, pleading to the referees. <laughs> He's not happy with the way that this thing's been officiated, but I think it's been a pretty well-officiated ball game myself. I do, too. No love lost between these two teams. They recruit head-to-head -head against each other for a lot of players around the Northwest. I'm sure everyone knows the story about the, the go this is the Governor's Cup. Uh, there's a bushel of apples from Washington and a bushel of potatoes from the state of Idaho. The athletic director for either school wins that. That was Cecil Andrus's idea. He says, I'll put up uh, some of our number one spuds. It's the state of Washington, and the Apples, of course, and the Spuds are going to win it, second year in a row. We had a penalty, uh, I guess, after the play. I didn't see a flag, did you? They're going to move 15 yards up, though. I didn't see the flag fly either, but it is. The ball is going to be spotted on the 50. Well, you know what Eric Stein's going to do. This game's not over yet. Four seconds. Right sides. Uh oh. And it's taken by Ernest Sanders. He's got one side of feet. Oh, the guy goes off to the races. Oh. <laughs> what do you say, Ernest? Final score. The Vandals beat Eastern 31 24 tonight.
That's going to do it tonight for our KUIV broadcast crew. This is Jeff McLean, Steve Michaelbus, Pat Weiss, Mark Stokes, and Laura Cox saying so long from the Kibbe Dome.